Back to GDB three cast. Let's pull up a uh, Twitch right here. <laughs> Uh, just uh, go right to it there. The runs or a lot of dancing in this game. There's a lot of dancing. Um, oh, so but yeah, we're actually about to uh, show a new trailer off in the PC gaming show right after this. So yep, people should look out yep. for that. And we'll be talking about new mechanics there and a whole new trailer. So excellent, man. Looking good. Well, thank you very much for, for showing just us in all time. the games. Uh, <laughs> Well, you can see more of Ooblets in the in the PC gaming show, which is coming up here in like less than two minutes. So. Uh, I look forward to seeing it. Double Fine. What, Twitch is hosting PC Gamer game Show, right? Uh, Presents.DoubleFine.com yep. has okay. all okay. games. Popping up just after this. Websites. And they're all very active on social media and stuff, too. So I'd say to track them down on Twitter. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for, for being here and showing them off. We're going to go right to the PC <laughs> Gaming Show. So let's go. Everyone get your pillows. Get a pillows. nice blanket. Blanket? Cause it's about to get cozy. What? Get your Hoovers out. That's the most <laughs> amazing. <laughs> oh boy. And explosion. There is magic. Is there though? Yeah. PC gaming. It says, "Don't just obey the rules." <laughs> what, what the, the fuck? hell is that? You're telling says, me Diva and Doom is not magic? Fuck out of here! Inhabit them. <laughs> it says, "Just back Don't in time." Just accept the limits. Overclock beyond them. It says, "Don't just play games. Revel in them." Unleash them. Oh, it's Fortnite. It says seriously. Is every game? Uh, I think the one Royale between it was Rust. Or is it just me? From mountaintops to dungeons. Subnautica. From deep waters to deeper space. From solo quests to mass engagements. Oh, sure, that there is, is magic June. in PC gaming. Let's celebrate that magic together. This is the PC gaming show. Politically correct. Game. <laughs> All right, this is Dana. I'm going to be missing belts and, and the, pan your host, the pants and the belt. Sean Plot. Oh, hello, hello, hello to everyone online. Hello to everyone at the Will Turn. Welcome to the PC right, Gaming good. Show. Hey, they don't have a couch this time. Yes. Yes. My name's Day9, I'm your host today. I am delighted to be here. We have a fantastic show for you this afternoon. First, to all of you who came out to the Wiltern, thanks for joining us. The Wiltern is just a beautiful venue here in Los Angeles. To all of you Square online Enix. on Twitch, thanks for joining us. To those co-streaming partners, <laughs> hey as well, I'm talking to you, Dropped Frames, great to have you here. And of course, Tripwire was there. All the wonderful sponsors that helped make the PC gaming I mean, show of course, come back again is going for to be the here. fourth it's not really a surprise. year. Now, They're one of the bigger games on PC. Good on you. Now, I'm not the only host here this year. I have my co-op partner up in the balcony. It's Frankie Ward joining us today. How's it going, Frankie? Hey, Sean. I'm going to be up here in the balcony with a bunch of creative new PC games coming your way. <clears throat> From Warfare's latest update to some offbeat indie gems. Frankie, we are so excited for the show to get started. We have Jesus. a lot of cue cards. That's a lot. <laughs> across the next 90 minutes. So let's get it underway. Our very first title is from Coffee Stain Studios. Their game has well, absolutely I hope there's enough time as well to cover them all at the end. Let's take a look at Satisfaction. There won't be. Exclusive. They are what? planning to go full, full three hours till Sony. <laughs> Oh no, it's again like Factorio. <laughs> no Man's Sky! <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. 
a few of the planets do. I thought it was. That's quite a crafting table. Uh oh. <laughs> hey guys, deforestation's bad. Only if you do it wrong. This looks pretty neat. Well, oh, you could just make your own damn steel mill. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Like Steven said, it's going to be Factorio. It's up. It looks like a first person Factorio. That looks yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Oh, hey, little guy. Okay. That's a good. That's a good. That is. That's a good. That's a good. Joining me on the stage to talk about it. Is the game director at Coffee State? What was his Studios. last name? It's Oscar Gilsayan. Come here, Oscar. Welcome to the stage. Okay. Thanks no for cue joining card, us I guess. Today. Thank you. Now, Oscar, I just want to begin right away by asking, what is Satisfactory all about? Satisfactory is uh, essentially about building these huge automated factories. Uh, so you play as a, an engineer that's been sent from Earth uh, to this alien planet. Satisfactory AF. Enormous that's a good tag uh, for Twitter. At the end of the trailer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to build that, you need a, a whole ton of parts, uh, which you need to build machines that will make them for you. So you'll start out pretty simple um, with a few machines, yeah. and then you'll just expand and expand and expand until you finally you need to start cutting down trees and replace them with like more convenient concrete. <laughs> And you know, for people who haven't played this type of game, can you give me an example of what producing a more advanced resource might look like? Right. Um, after a while, you'll need to create something uh, more advanced, like a computer, for yeah. example. Uh, and you'll, at that point, you'll have some copper stuff set up, your wires and cables. But yeah. to make plastic, you need to uh, get some oil. So you need to go out and you need to find this oil, yeah. uh, build some oil pumps and oil refineries, and, and do you set think up, it just uh, works? Transport. Um, with self-driving vehicles just works. the outpost in your factory. Yeah, and I want to talk about that scale because, I, you know, there's a lot of games where you build a house or a small town. How much area are we talking about where all your factories will exist? Oh, th this uh, factory will grow enormous. Uh, the, the main part, which will probably be the biggest, will start spreading more and more and more. Or in some cases, we've had players just building these massive, tall buildings with yeah. factory floor upon factory floor. But including the um, resources that you need to gather from basically all around the map. Yeah. So you'll have vehicles driving all over. Now, I want to ask about the first person perspective because these types of games typically are top down. Why first person? We, we want it to feel like the, the player is the one building the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you know, when, when you build, you've built a bunch of stuff, and you can see these enormous buildings, just structures towering yeah. above you. But also when you go out and explore, mm. uh, you'll be the one, like, you go through the underbrush and in the jungles yeah. and whatever. I mean, in the trailer, it even looked like there's a lot more to explore, like different environments and biomes. Mm, yeah, yeah, the, the map is, uh, we made a point to make it big and varied. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's about uh, 30 square kilometers in yeah. size, so it's kind of enormous. Wow. And, you know, one final question, I saw multiple engineers there. How does multiplayer work? Oh, it's a, it's a co-op game. So you'll basically you'll awesome. start up a server and Hooray. play with your friends. Great. Now tell us, how do we get our hands on this game? So we got a closed alpha uh, planned in the coming months. Uh, so you can sign up for, uh, for the alpha at satisfactorygame.com. 
uh, and yeah, then you'll know. Well, great, Oscar. Thanks for joining me on stage once again. Damn it, that I was just on the website, and I thought that was just like a newsletter. Com. Now, up in the balcony, Frank. Oh, uh, it fucked up. Our very first <laughs> the website's today. still up. We do indeed, Sean, because here's something we love about the PC platform. It's such fertile ground for creative ideas. It's from struggling. Teams. Neo Cab is an emotional survival game set in the future about gig labor, tech disruption, and the experience of being a driver for hire. Perhaps the last of your kind. From the brand new indie studio Chance Agency, let's watch Neo the first Cab. gameplay trailer for Neo Cab. I mean, if it's anything like Crazy Taxi, it'll sell. Follow Verde. <laughs> I'm awaiting your confirmation email. Rita, get up. Thank you. Got the newsletter. Yeah, subscribe me. And I probably got it too. Neo Cab. I'm glad like Uber's not Twitter. dead, or Uber didn't kill cabbies. Now our next game, believe it. Uh, uh, all right, time to get a drink. Royale genre. Of course, it's E3 2018. What do you expect? Well, it depends which what one. Several, several today. Games are going to be Stop. About today because the Battle Royale My format head. is very simple and very flexible. Players play in an ever shrinking space until there's one last stand. I swear to God, so if it's Realm Royale. Been doing all kinds of different explorations of what this could possibly be. And our very first Battle Royale game that will be introduced what the today fuck? has up to 1,000 concurrent players. It's from Automaton Games. Let's look. At Mavericks proving. I think I oh, is this see. the is this a medieval game? The name sounds familiar. No, absolutely not. Never mind. That is not medieval. There's a game with like a very similar name, I think, recently. Yo, finally something of E360 FPS. I can't wait for the 1 million player battle royale. We need a weekly battle royale. A million players join at once and you have a week to complete it. If you die, you have to wait a week. If you win, you get some lump sum money. It doesn't look bad, like graphically or gameplay wise, if this is actual gameplay. Yeah, this is not game cinematic. Engine. Game, no, yeah, game, game engine. No, it's... Yeah, yeah in, in game engine, but not actual gameplay. Yeah, that looked a bit too, like, fast and coordinated for it to be truly. Never it's proven grounds. Yeah, prove you can get sued. Joining me on the stage to talk about Mavericks Proving Grounds is the CEO of Automaton Games, it's James Thompson. Look how enthusiastic he looks. James, Dude, he's like fucking for joining us. 17. Pleasure. Now, I want to immediately ask, what about Prove, or excuse me, Mavericks Don't just say it's more players. Gee, he's 30. itself from other Battle Royale games. 
Yeah, well, as you said, it's a very popular formula, and yeah. you know that last man standing uh, kind of game type is incredibly compelling by itself. Yeah. But <laughs> Mavericks is really about depth. You know, we've already talked about 400 <laughs> players before, and we're sort of super excited today to talk about our five-man squad mode being a thousand players. Uh, but really, it's it's about depth as well. It's about the fact that yeah. that environment is even a bigger step. The simulation and yeah. those elements sort of combining together. Yeah, I, I want to zoom in right on the <laughs> 1,000 Jesus, he is high. How does that really <laughs> shift the dynamic from, uh, let's say, 100 that we're typically used to? Mm. Well, it's really about combining <laughs> scale with the depth of simulation. So the fact that together, what you actually have is a landscape that means you're making decisions off a lot more information. Yeah, I mean, because you hinted at that twice now. Like, what do you mean by there's a lot more information in the environment for players to process? So take a con concrete example, right? So let's say a player's walking through the map, they'll be leaving footprints, they'll be displacing foliage, like oh, grass okay. bending, uh, but can you know, siege style gameplay in houses. He's like, going like, back and forward a lot, so you're gonna fall over. Together make the map. Yeah, there's much more of a dynamic environment. It's like a recent history of who Maybe. could have been here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to ask about what more is in store for Mavericks Proving Grounds. I understand that this is a lot more out game features than someone might expect. Yeah, so it's not just that session based gameplay. You enter the game through the capital, which is our sort of persistent social hub. So we draw from the MMORPG side of things. It's really a, right. it's a full world, not just a map. You know, so it's He's got a consistent gameplay grass. side to it too. We'll go after but really something. about bringing this all together into something which makes a much richer MMO experience. Now, where can people go to find out more? Well, we've just launched our site right now, so if you're Great. interested in signing up for the closed beta, uh, you can do that now at mavericks.gg slash closed hyphen beta. And uh, actually, if you register this week, you'll get special in-game content for free from E3. Awesome. And we have only 100,000 slots for the first group signing up, so right on. that will give you some beta access. Yeah, dude, cool. shout out to Adam Sessler. On the stream, so quickly do that if you're interested in. Well, James, thanks so much for joining us. Once again, <laughs> that's maverick.gg. Our very next game helps showcase the extraordinary power of modders. Frankie, tell us about it. It does indeed, Sean. On PC, we don't just play what's given to us. We mod games to make our own experience. How many people are in the and crowd? And for many developers, modding is a way to turn a hobby <laughs> into a career. Uh, it's not a big crowd. At least five, I see. The perfect example. <laughs> it's the standard <laughs> game of the reimagining of a wild What? Well, I'm being serious. Mod. In fact, the first <laughs> mod in history to win a National Writers Guild Award. For the first time the ever, here's gameplay from the Forgotten City. Walking Simulator. Yeah. I love the Night at the Museum movies. I'm so sorry you had to find the imagining of a mod and worse. What mod have you idea? Suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, an ancient underground city. Paid its mods. existence long <laughs> forgotten, searching for a way out. Ugh. All I found is a window into the past. If even one person here commits a sin, everyone will die. I tried to set things right, but whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. It's all up to you now. Back, investigate, talk to everyone, help them out if it'll win their trust, bend the rules as far as you can, figure out who's responsible for this, and maybe you can do what I never could. Save these people, save yourself. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. The forgotten city. Coming to an so people King will Wolfers. forget about this game. Coming up on the PC. Hey, there it is. What game? What's next exactly. for Killing Floor 2? And an unannounced game from Tripwire Interactive. And now Here he's your again. host, Sean Plot. Our next game is a blast oh, there's from the plenty past. In that crowd. It's not a sequel or prequel or remake, but rather an entirely new game altogether. Let's take a look at Stardock's Star Control Origins. Long ago, the singularity formed, its creators uplifted into something beyond our understanding. These beings, now known as the Lexites, left Earth, traveling to multiple planets in our solar system, before vanishing altogether. 
This is why we are here. Welcome to Star Control, a state-of-the-art international space agency tasked with the exploration of our solar system and the defense of Earth. Here reside the world's brightest minds and greatest technology, brought together by a strong curiosity to discover the unknown. Help us pioneer the future. Join today. Star Control has accelerated the construction of our new modular deep solar system vessels specifically for this mission. It's the fastest, most expensive ship humanity has ever made, Captain. I am Chief Viscosity Officer Windu uh, of the time. This took a different turn. I have no idea what this is. Little babble good. That guy is designed to school. That, that, I don't know. A new alien in a delightful new spaceship. You must be humans. We've heard so much about you. It's a new pre-order pre plate to get today. What? In other words, early access. Joining me to talk about yep. Star Control is the director of production at Star Doc, Patrick Shaw. Thanks for joining me on stage today, Patrick. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So now just tell us straight up, what is Star Control all about? So Star Control is an open universe action RPG. You can visit dozens of aliens, hundreds of different stars, thousands of different unique planets, and you can land on each and every one of them. And when you're driving around the planets, you can jump over canyons, uh, blast critters, and then you can venture out into the solar system and do ship-to-ship -ship combat with hostile aliens. And I, I want to ask, since I know that the story is a big part of this game, with I've it heard being this open world, before. how do you make sure that the story still stays <laughs> yeah. as the focus for the player? Yeah, so we're really excited about the story that we prepared for Star Control. It's funny, it's creative, um, but also has some dark, uh, sinister side to it. However, mm -hmm. we're very proud of We're <laughs> going about right we into that territory. That is, we are fully simulating the entire universe at all times. So even if you're on some huh. podunk little moon in the corner of the universe, the aliens are still moving around the universe, doing their own thing, exploring and interacting with each other. So it's not just like at a planet, there's the same town whenever you visit it. It depends on how the simulation has driven it forward. Right. Exactly. So this is the this uh, infinite universe is the glue that connects my story, my adventure to the larger open galaxy. That's awesome. Now I know modding is going to be a big part of Star Control Origins. How does the modding work? So what's your favorite science fiction show? Probably Firefly. Yeah. So what would you think of making Firefly season two? Shit, that's a lot of pressure, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're putting me on the spot on stage right now. Yeah, we have a week to do it. So, um, but anyways, in Star Control Origins, you can create your own ships, your own planets, your own galaxies. You can package up your adventures and share them with your friends online. So someone else can take care of Firefly season two. That's up to you. Now, last thing I want to ask about is how multiplayer works. Right. So in the game, we have ship to ship combat, and that turned about to be so popular in our early testing. They're like, we should make this our, it, a separate gameplay mode. So we did. We called it Fleet Battles. So you can create your own ships, you build them out of different pieces and parts, you attach different weapons and defenses, and then you go online to play them. You can either play local multiplayer, two people on the same machine, or online ranked online, ranked online play. Online. Play. Where can people go to pick online up casual Star and Origins? online Well, right now, Star Control Origins is available for pre-order on GOG and Steam. Well, lovely. Guys, definitely be sure to head over to StarControlGame.com and check them out on Steam and GOG as well. And one more thing, we are happy to announce at the PC Gamer Show that uh, Star Control Origins is launching on September, September 20th, 20th, 2018. Look for it on September 20th. Now, our next game was PC Gamer's favorite game from E3 last year. It is Hunt Showdown from Crytek. Hunt Let's Showdown's a really cool idea. Coming from Hunt Showdown I haven't heard much about it recently.
What kind of game is this? It looks cool. It is... Sorry, I, I don't want to call it Battle Royale, but it also kind of fits in that genre. Uh, 12 people are dropped on the same map. You have to kill a monster for their objective, uh, banish them, and then make the exit. It's is honestly it, a cool. It's a cool idea for the game. Is it competitive or co-op? Uh, you I can do it co-op with, with another person, but you are against other players. Oh, okay. Massive mech suit is not about to go out of fashion any time soon. Guy, now Hellfire. In fact, sorry, Archangel was originally a single-player narrative game, but Hellfire, this new edition, what changes is that going to make? Well, players really loved the single-player narrative, but they all kept telling us the same thing. They said. We really want it multiplayer, and we want it off rails. And we kind of thought, that's a completely different game, <laughs> but let's give it a shot. Uh, and so we got a crack team together. Uh, they put something really special. We got four maps, we got six different mechs, tons of weapons where you could just blast through the environment and other mechs alike. And it's really just an amazing experience. You can zip around in your mech, you can tower over others, it's just something special that and I can try right now. And when is this coming out of early access? So you just said we can try it right now, but you've got the full version launching soon, right? Correct. Yeah, it's coming out in July 17th. Uh, but you can try it right now if you want an early access. Help us iron out the kinks. What and, game uh, break is this called? Along the process. Archangel. Uh, Archangel. I, I think Archangel Hellfire. Guy, but as a heavy mech woman, I can't, I can't reach wait Steam right to now, see so. my like, mech wingman in that 2v2 PvP. So let's take a closer look at Alexa, Archangel open Hellfire. Steam. Well, they have a trailer now, so... Alexa, install Skyrim. We have Archangel Hellfire for I-17. What happened to Killing 14? They replaced it with mechs. Our next title is one I've been looking forward to for quite some time. It's from the makers of Sherlock Holmes, and it's a delightful looking Lovecraftian mystery. It's called The Sinking City, and joining me to talk about it is the community manager at Frogwares, Sergei Oganisian. Welcome, Sergei. Thanks for joining me today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you've earned a handshake. Yeah, you Welcome nailed that pronunciation. I am starting to think that Seth is tall. I love that you lie to me so kindly. <laughs> Please, I'm ask right away, The Sinking City, you know, there's a lot of open world third person type games. Games, what makes The Sinking City different from what a player might expect? Well, I mean, The Sinking City is an open-world action investigation game inspired by Lovecraft. And we believe that these three elements already make the game pretty unique. And you know, when I say that you can be a detective in a, in a world, in a supernatural world full of mystery and, you know, cosmic fear, like, I really mean it, because investigations are really at the core of The Sinking City. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of games in the open world genre that are focused on action, but you say investigation is at the core. What, what are investigation mechanics? What does it look like? So the first thing you should know right off the bat is that we are not going to <laughs> offer any hand holding for the player. We will not give you any clear objectives in your diary or, you know, markers on the map telling you where to go or what to do. It's actually up to you to figure that out. Instead, yeah. we will give you information, you know, hints, evidence, like clues, crime scenes to examine, like people to talk to, suspects to question. Sounds and kind we will of ask you fun. In turn to use your wits and your intuition to... My only worry is that they did the Sherlock Holmes games like and they were and what okay, you also know but also very lacking at times. Will not only help you understand what's oh. going on and, you know, uh, yeah. get a better understanding of the world and its people, but it will also help you maybe change the course of your investigation. You know, you mentioned the world itself. I mean, <laughs> the footage that I've seen through the years has just been absolutely beautiful. Talk to me about the world that we're in and what investigation is at the core. So the game takes place in this fictional city of Oakmont in the state of Massachusetts. You know, the city which is flooded. There is a terrible disaster going on, which has claimed like thousands of lives. And also, like, it seems like it awakened frightening monsters, which are very the streets clunky. Of you know, people that live in the city, they are very different, like different social classes, uh, gangs, cultists, poor people, rich people, but they are all yeah. united by fear. You know, they are all afraid, maybe except for the cultists, of course, they are all afraid <laughs> that, uh, uh, you know, for their lives because of the flood, because of the monsters. And you know, we actually want to understand what's going on. We want to understand what lies be behind this ostensibly supernatural uh, flood. And what's even funny is that while everybody is afraid, nobody wants to leave. But this is kind of a different story. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, you, we've talked a little bit about the story world and how it's inspired by Lovecraft. What about the game mechanics? You've mentioned the sanity Why are you mechanic talking to a character with the most Indeed, we do have a sanity shot. mechanic which, which directly impacts the game. a daft idea. You know, when our hero is under a lot of stress, when he sees like something supernatural, something disturbing, or even when he's making a choices in the story which he's not comfortable with making, uh, you know, he will begin to lose his sanity. Uh, he's like, he will start to have hallucinations, he will start to hear distorted sounds, yeah. which will allow the player to understand that something is actually going wrong. Maybe we need to, you know, step back and do something about that. As of right now, we're still fine-tuning this mechanic because we are still looking, you know, for the sweet spot between yeah. impact on the gameplay and impact on the story. Since we're almost out of time, I still just have to ask, what are the sweet monsters that we're going to get to see in the game? Oh, we have different kinds of monsters. We have different kinds of archetypes, you know, with different abilities. And, you know, we actually give you tools. The game is not about fighting monsters. Investigation is the right. core of the game. But we give you tools to defend yourself. So we give you weapons, we give you skills, we give you even so certain, like, traps. In return, we ask you that yeah. you make a decision, because the game is about making a decision. Uh, ammunition is scarce, and you will have to adjust your tactics accordingly. So, I know a lot of people have all sorts of questions about what the game is like. Where can they go to God find out more information? Uh, so, if you're hungry for more, you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, this is where we post our updates regularly. Facebook, The Sinking City Game, YouTube, uh, Frogwares. Uh, so, go there, and yeah. like, this is definitely the place to go if you want to learn more. Well, I'm super excited personally to see how it turns out. Thanks for joining me on stage, Sergey. The Sinking City. Now, our next game is a PC title that has only gotten better over the last few years, and I'm always excited to hear what they have in store. Frankie is Warframe. up on the balcony with the developers Warframe. of Warframe. Talk to me, Frankie. Warframe. Well, we all know the PC is the sacrifice. one of the most devoted communities in gaming, and one of the best undoubtedly Devoted to watching Twitch streams. Warframe. Last year, the game got its first open world update, Planes of Eidolon, and the next epic cinematic quest is called The Sacrifice. And we've got the exclusive launch trailer for you. Cool. Megan Everett, community oh, manager right. of okay. Digital Extremes, joins me now. Megan and not Megan, fucking Rebecca? Okay, sure, why not? So the sacrifice is the latest installment of our. Well, they're both community quest. managers, so it doesn't really matter. We started in the Second Dream, continued with the War Within, and then Apostasy Prologue. So at the end of last year, we kind of shattered some hearts and uh, left them with a bit of a plot twist. And I'm not going to spoil it for people who want to maybe catch up. Uh, but what I can say is that obviously from the trailer that you saw. The wait for Umbra, the three-year wait, the Umbra Warframe is finally over. Uh, the creepy guy at the end of the trailer there, Ballas, plays a pretty big role in this quest. And uh, again, not going to spoil a lot, but I can say that it's coming this week on PC. And you guys are actually currently waiting, well, for, as well as the update, you're working towards Tenacon right now. Yes, so it's going to be another big year for us, and I'm really excited for it. Well, let's take a look at last year's event to get an idea of what Tenacon is all about. What do you think the mega reveal at Teno Live is going to be? Can you tell me anything about this, this Umber thing that's maybe going on or whatever? It was pretty amazing. Like, it's a whole new direction oh, for Joe. Warframe and all this. You got all these other games coming out, but this one's Fish. free. When's 2018 happening? Get it Guess started. We'll talk more of the big updates there. July 7th. Okay. Given that the community knows you as Auntie Megan, oh God. it must be huge for you to be at Tenacon. Tenacon is really special for really everyone that works at Digital Extremes. The developers pour their heart and soul into what we do for TennoCon. And I know for me, it was literally like the best day of my entire career. I know Rebecca, our community director at home, was watching. Um, but last year, when we did the Plains of Eidolon, you know, open world expansion reveal, uh, Rev and I were actually doing that as a live demonstration in front of everyone. And we had practiced it for months. 
and it went as flawlessly as we could have ever hoped for. And we actually, like, as people were cheering, it's pitch black on stage, Rev and I look at each other and we just kind of fist pump and both started crying because we didn't crash the demonstration. Uh, so if you, wa <laughs> if you watch Ten Alive this year, if you're there, uh, you can definitely probably count on some tears and some emotions because it's, it's a really big day for us. So basically bring tissues, right? Bring tissues for yourself, for me, for <laughs> everyone involved because there will be some tears probably. But um, if you can't get to Tenacon because unfortunately it is sold out, how can you watch it online? So on twitch.tv slash Warframe, you can definitely check it out. And uh, PC Gamer is also hosting as well on their Facebook and Twitter. And you get free stuff by watching Twitch? You do. So if you want to link your uh, Warframe account to your Twitch account, and all you have to do is watch and you get some free stuff. Fantastic. <laughs> so that's happening from July 7th, and you'll be able to watch Tenacon Live through PC Gamer's Twitch channel and the Facebook page. Thank you, Auntie Megs. Oh. Sean, it's over to you. Thank you, Frank. Maybe I'll reinstall Warframe, Warframe again one day. The next name is one I grew up with. I understand Warframe. They've become a prolific publisher of Japanese Good games. Good for you. Known cool. for their fully featured ports, especially beloved by this guy on the left. Sega. Sega's bringing shining resonance both to PC and console Dom. the same day. And Shenmue is going to be coming later this year. They have all sorts Sega. of games coming up. Let's take a look at what Sega's got in store. Wonderful game. Yeah. These are all there. Coming soon. Here we go. Hey! Shenmue is the set. Yep. And everyone will know. One and two. Big Animu. It's a God Eater. Shining Resonance. That's not God Eater? Whoops. Lol. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, what? Excuse me? Oh. Dr. Excuse me? Huh? Is it finally. Oh my Did god. Did they do it? <laughs> yeah, here's a Kalami coming to PC. Hell yeah, dude. Is that Valkyria Chronicle 2? Yeah. Was that Valkyria Chronicle? Could that have been a mistake? Like, the second no? They put <laughs> that in there? Hell yeah, I'll play more Valkyria Chronicles. I'll play Valkyria Chronicles 4. I guess I need to play 2 and 3 somewhere else. And 0. Good. Good. That's the one. Get that first. Don't get Kiwami first. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, it's ah, oh, yes. Available for pre-order. Oh, free net. <clears throat> oh shit! I I don't have money for all these games. Yakuza Zero is available for pre-order. Early right August. Now and Damn. We'll be releasing on Steam in early August. We hope you've been enjoying the show thus far. We have so much more great stuff to come. Let's see what's coming up at this year's PC Gaming Show. Coming up on the PC Gaming Show, a new publisher reveals three new games and yeah, the first like to see more of that. gameplay footage of Overkill's The Walking Dead. Wait, what? And now your host, Overkill's the Sean Walking Dead? Plot. Yep. Yeah, they announced it so many years and ago, it feels yeah, like. I think, they, been I, think only a couple. I think I think beforehand it was supposed to be a VR game, but then they the expanded it into actually a proper full game. All four years, tripwire. Them up in the balcony, it's Tripwire. Sean, if you are anything like me, you probably need to let off steam every once in a while. And I personally can't think of a yeah, better way to do up. it than by kicking back and tearing up a load of monstrous enemies. It's kind of either that or pushing the office photocopier out of the window. And I, for one, prefer the option that keeps me can't and everyone argue with that here common, I guess. in a job. With that in mind, I am thrilled to welcome Bill Monk from Killing Floor 2 back to E3. Hi, That's what to say. They didn't show anything in Killing Floor 2 when floor. they were talking about it. I think they were saying it was upcoming, kind of like what they just did with Walking Dead. Yep, we've been really busy working on Killing Floor, and we got some, uh, we got four major updates that are coming out this year. The first one we dropped in March, and we're getting ready to drop the next one 
really soon. Coming tomorrow, Bill. What's involved? Yeah, so we're bringing the summer sideshow back, but this time we're mixing circus freaks with steampunk in a really fun, exciting way. And we have a really cool new uh, system that we're adding. It's called the weapon upgrade system. And with this, there's 73 different weapons that we have in our game, and each one you can uh, upgrade it and make it viable for late play. So it really adds a lot of creativity to your loadout. So I'm really excited to get that in people's hands. So you can make your boy, <laughs> your boy guns big. <laughs> Casually drop the shit. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank today, you. Bill. Let's take a look it's at okay. the trailer for Treacherous Disney's Guys not hosting this one. Show. So this beta patch is finally releasing then. That's cool. About to say, it's actually pretty fun. Yeah, we had fun in it. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the robot's coming back. Oh, I hope they knock those things. Fuck. Welcome aboard the HMS Queen Victoria, ladies and gents. Ring I was like, is that a voiceover? Because it's flowing. Well, yeah. You helped me escape that fray at my beloved Steamland, but now I need your help once again. I've got to get to my island in the channel. Now, now, listen up. I don't know how, but these blasted circus freaks followed us on board. I think it's time to put on Wow, Yakuza's is also fucking 18 bucks. On Steam? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Blasted traitors! Careful lads! They're tough! Even removing the head! Who we'll put these rebellious robots down? <laughs> but take part, lads and lasses! I have invented some new like, toys! That's, those are some good reveals for Sega for PC. What the hell? The yeah. Strikers, a shockingly stylish set of gauntlets! Oh, the BFG. The sniper rifle! And finally, there's a last-minute addition to the crew. What's this woman go? Seems Mrs. Foster negotiated her way on board and is set on giving Zen. You gotta pay for her though. The business. Oh, but. And remember, we'll see that map is quite fun. the airship. Fossey, joke for you. Optician says my eyes are okay. Um, I say wow, that she's I have fucking to explain my freak. husband. Uh. <laughs> As is tradition, the content that you just saw will be available tomorrow, including a free weekend for PC this weekend. Definitely check it out with Killing Floor 2. But that's not all that Tripwire has. I have the president of Tripwire himself, John Gibson, on stage. John, welcome back again. Thanks, Sean. Pleasure to be here. Now, I understand that Tripwire is stepping into also doing publishing. What does that entail? That's developers. Right. So, Sean, it's really challenging for developers right now with the thousands of games that are coming out every year. Yeah. It's really hard to get noticed. We've got and developers from A to Z. Publishing deals. So, <laughs> we're giving developers fair deals. We're going noise. to be helping them rise above that noise so they can get noticed. And because of our experience developing our own games and publishing our own oh, yeah. games, we're going to help them with marketing, funding, mentoring, feedback to help them succeed. Yeah, I mean, the game that, that game. we have on screen is one of those games. This is Road Redemption. That is right. I'm happy to announce that we're going to be publishing Road Redemption. We're going to be helping them grow and succeed even more on Steam, but also bring the franchise beyond Steam. Now, I know today you have a world-exclusive new game. Hasn't been announced we yet. We do. Nobody knows. Or we roll the trailers. I wonder if you give me a little bit of a tease. Yeah, so we're working with the team at Blindside Games, mm -hmm. uh, and they're led by Alex Quick. Oh, yeah, right. So if you're familiar with the Killing Floor universe, you know Alex Quick was the modder that created the original Killing Floor mod, which Tripwire worked with Alex to bring commercial. And then Alex went off, assembled his own team, made the yeah. game Depth, which was sharks and humans fighting each other. Very, very successful. But now it's come full circle. We're working with Alex that again. Sounds like it could We're be quick bring his all new game to market. Well, let's take a look at it right from now. Tripwire, huh? Exclusive let's new see. upcoming game from Tripwire. Let's see. World exclusive. Close your eyes and imagine a place where the sun is bright and the beaches are white. A place filled with southern charm where the water is as warm as the welcome. Rita, you're so wanted. Come feel the wind in your sails. Kick back and relax. 
Enjoy the Jaws local game? cuisine. Your dream vacation is waiting for you here on the Gulf Coast. Oh my god. This guy really loves sharks. You can play as the shark? You're the shark! Yeah, you could, you could do that in depth as well. Wow. Yeah, but that's just all underwater game. This is... Go oh to Maneater Game Time. Maneater! Now. <laughs> your Jesus Christ! Operators are standing by. <laughs> so, so, hey, John. So you get to play as the shark. You are the shark. Oh, you are the shark. This is an open world action RPG where you play as a shark. Oh, no. <laughs> a shark PG. I oh, never knew nice. I'd okay, so, that a fucking open so world like action RPG shark, shark game like would exist. Trees? But here there we are. Shark skill in 2018. <laughs> really? <laughs> Jesus. There is a full single player campaign. You eat your way through it. You get bigger teeth, you can jump out of the water and snatch people off piers and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> this looks like I, something I Drew would play. <laughs> so badly. <laughs> now, where can people go to get more it information It sounds interesting, it? that's they for sure. They go to maneatergame.com. Jesus. All right, I doubt anyone will forget that here. Man that's maneatergame.com. Game. John, thanks so much for joining me on stage. And once My again, pleasure. all the content that Tripwire showcased earlier about Killing Floor 2 and Road Redemption will be playable here at E3. Definitely be sure to check it out. Coming up next, Frankie has a whole slew of unannounced games. Frankie. Cheers, Sean. Man eater looking tasty there, and I can't believe they oh. named a game after my favorite weekend activity. Oh. Indies are the heart oh. of the gaming and this <laughs> brand new published three games for the band. band. Oh. And releasing one Get off this knee. Audience today. Ah, shit, we on so Disney. Let's take a look. Hi, we're Untitled Publisher. Yes, really. <laughs> That's her <laughs> name. Publishers are boring, but games and developers aren't. <laughs> oh boy, what do you Are have? Curating games for you? Free games. <laughs> right away. Three. What was it called? It was called Manier. Gord. Untitled. Here we go. Three games. One that's coming out right away. <laughs> right. I love that name. That's very funny. Untitled publisher, huh? Don't know what this is, but I kind of like Jar style. New fighting game, let's go. Tactical RPG? Tactical rock, paper, scissors. Bravery Network Online. Never argue with banjos. Turn up. I can't believe it's Stardew first person. That's what it looks like, right? Um. Oh, oh never mind. See, uh, see, turn up. Oh, oh, uh. The Stanley Farming Simulator. Installing turn up. Turn up. Harvest? Morning Star. Okay. Seems trippy. Okay, this looks good. This looks good. Alright. 8 bit at its finest. This is the one that's gonna be out now then. Did yeah, say, probably. Did it say anything for release date for Morning Star? No. no. Alright. Point and click platformer shooter? No, point and click. What? How is it not point and click? 
He's shooting where his mouse cursor is. Overwhelmed. That looks cool. They I like games like that. Right All right, well. It looks fun. Itch and Steam. How much is it? Price? Two, Two dollar. I have no idea. All these games look like must plays. And Overwhelm, the final game of the bunch is available on Steam. 30% right launch weekend discount. Now with a special launch discount. So make Round sure Steam you check that right out now. after the show. And if you're at E3 this week, head over to the PC Gamer corner of the Facebook booth inside the South Hall to give Overwhelm a try. Right, next up, it's time for us all to take a holiday and where better than a virtual resort with some truly spectacular wildlife. Back again this year, our friends of the show, Frontier Developments, with a unique take on the park management genre. I that am, of course, tomorrow. talking about Jurassic World Evolution. The long-awaited game is out tomorrow and lets you build your own dinosaur-stuffed tourist trap. What could possibly go wrong? Unleash the Goldblum! <laughs> you think that things are going to turn out differently, <laughs> huh? Well, the ones before you did, too. Fear stands because for virtual resort. Because they believed they were in control. And control... Well, here's the thing. Humanity is desperate for it. We are seduced by it. Deceived by the illusion of it. But we never really possess it. Because mm. if there's anything that chaos theory has taught us, it's that nature is on its own course. And when we interfere, when humanity tries to put nature into orderly boxes, chaos destroys them. And what makes us such unique creatures is knowing the scope and power of what we're up against and still believing that we can win. I know, however, what I would predict. Reviews just came out for this today, and it sounds like it's okay as like a management sim. That's fine then. I am so and excited If it means anything to anyone, game. it's the same developers Our as Planet Coast. The title is from Insomniac, oh, who've been yeah, making amazing that. games for years, and they're Insomniac gonna try to doing? take their expertise and answer the question. What's upset? How um, do you make an open world up. game in VR? Let's what? take a look at their upcoming game. What's Insomniac Stormland. doing? Um, good question. Stormland, that's what. <laughs> I didn't know Insomniac had two studios. This looks interesting. It looks like the type of game that VR potentially needs. Hmm. I get to play as a robot? Whoa, whoa, I was just looking at the fruit! It feels bad, man. Whatever the fuck that was. Mm -hmm. You picked up the forbidden fruit. Is he gonna iron giant? You're risking that. You're That's risking not that. how that That's works, fine. but... Bionics. <laughs> Bionicles. Weird. Oh shit, getting revenge. Shit. 
This will be a great game in VR for sure. Yeah. Hopefully. I'll play co-op as well. You straight move though, so uh, ideal for Rift and not the others. Otherwise, you're looking at very short play sessions. <sighs> it's gonna be exclusive anyway. Damn. To Oculus? Oh, they fucked up. It's it's a Oculus Studios presents, so I imagine they're gonna keep it. Well, uh, prepared to so. prepared for short sessions. Joining me to talk about Stormland is the chief creative officer at Insomniac Games. Join I'm me pretty sure you can mod it into other VR Desert. systems as well. I think there's some mods for that. Or some programs for it. Hey, Chad, welcome to hey, the Des. stage. Thank you. I want to start right away and ask, Beep, boop, bop. what is this game all about? Yeah, that's how we well, should talk. In Stormland, <laughs> you play as an android gardener, bop, boop, boop, bop. and uh, an entity called the Tempest uproots your oh, habitat. We did it, guys. We lasted over 50 body. minutes. So you've got to travel yeah, to barely, civilization though. above the Thunderhead. <laughs> if it wasn't for Yakuza, and save your friends. I would have been passed out right now, and we would have gotten to 50 well, minutes anyways. Because yeah. I couldn't turn the stream off. The world freely <laughs> with a set of Android movement abilities that are designed to yeah. give you complete agency. Yeah, well, it only goes on for an hour, hour and a half, right? In any VR title. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so. in Stormland, yeah. you to. can do things like fly just above the slipstream with your outstretched Android hands. Yeah. Um, you can shoot a laser into the cloud surface, and then make a ramp, kick off of that. Um, climb up a cliffside, like literally launching yourself with your synthetic android strength, <sighs> and then like push off and glide back down using your hands. Hey, I can't no get the borderlands boxes. I've been yawning all day. Yeah. That, that's it. It's this set of mechanics that are designed to yeah, get Yeah, Square Enix kind of fucked us in thing. So that um, movement yeah. feels yeah. exhilarating. Yeah. And uh, you, you can kind of take the world at your own pace with it. I'm curious why VR for this type of title? There, there are a series of things that we're doing with Stormland that, that we could only do in VR. Um, it's about the, the expressiveness of having tracked head and hands and yeah. how we use that for combat, how we use it for movement, um, even things yeah, like that's the problem with VR games. It's like to attach it to your body. Like if it's designed for VR, it has to like stay VR. You There's no right like your arm. <laughs> you know, then, you know, suddenly you've got the middle ground you can meet to have it yeah. play with regular controls. All kinds of different cool Android abilities. Yeah. I mean, the, the art is Otherwise, you dramatically the compromise the experience for VR. About the world and what it means. Unless it's VR chat. Yeah. Well, that game is. That's a joke in itself. Every single week. Doesn't have to. The yeah. player with new playgrounds of movement and, and combat and scavenging yeah. and you never know what you're going to discover so every single island you find yeah. has the potential to ha hide an enemy stronghold or a network of underground caverns or brand new tech discoveries. that's awesome yeah now i gotta ask where can we go for more information well um you can uh stay tuned uh by watching um, the uh, the Facebook and Twitter with um, at Stormland VR, or you can check us out at insomniac.games. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for joining me, Chad. Once again, oculus.com slash Stormland for more information. Frankie's up in the balcony with our next absolutely gorgeous looking indie title. <laughs> it really is, Sean, because next up we've got a first Ooh, look Fury. at a new game from publisher Raw Fury, a neo-noir detective drama featuring a Paris cabbie who finds himself drawn into a world of crime. Sacre Roddy Bleu. Yes, I speak French. I can't wait for this I can't one. believe there's so two games design. revolving around being a cabbie and solving a mystery. I wonder if there's going to be a game with the Hoover in it. I'm very upset at you right now. <laughs> uh. the music yeah i 
I thought Omnio doing it was part of the music. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the game, Nightcall? Guess so. Twitch chat. It's a video game! Uh, Nightcall. Okay. What's with cab dramas now? Yeah, uh... Dip that's too Good little. Night. If you like that last game, you'll definitely love our next one. It's from the exact same publisher, Raw Fury. Oh, it's an open what? world narrative focused game. Oh, it's the next game. Okay, I thought they were talking about a cap game. At Sable. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Ooh, look at the art style. <sighs> Cape for <laughs> anything with like fun movement. This is skate for now. Man, that's like bare bones tune shading. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars: The Force Awakens. It's cool that they definitely like modeled the things to work in the art style, but it is it is reshade oh, to filter. Yeah. I like how her pants are like clipping through the bottom half of the shirt. I yeah, I thought. <laughs> uh. Sable. I? Oh, that's also Raw Fury. Uh. Rule! Joining me to talk about Sable is pretty much the entire core development team on stage. It's Daniel Feinberg <laughs> and Greg Kithriotis. I want to immediately ask, what kind of game is Sable? What can we expect? Uh, Sable is an open world desert exploration game. It's not a game about combat or about leveling up. It's a game about solitude and it's a game about exploration. Uh, you play as Sable, a girl leaving her home uh, to explore that run cycle. this world filled with monumental architecture, fallen spaceships, and you'll travel around on your hover bike learning about the people, the culture, and the history of There's this, like uh, three frames in that run cycle. I, I, I talked about it before. I yeah, that's yeah. how it is. is amazing. Where's the origins of this? So <laughs> we were really heavily inspired by the clear lines style of <laughs> French and Belgian comics, mm -hmm. as well as Japanese animation. We um, could be interesting. Particularly Studio Ghibli. Push them off the cliff. So um, Push we really off want to feel our players to feel the same sense of wonder that you get from watching Damn. one of their films. And so, from uh, the I don't think really they can nail the visual style. And uh, mm. yes, yeah, so we put a lot of time and sort of effort into our rendering system. I mean, they've and, got and something, but I don't think really that's evident yeah. what they're talking and, about. I, mean, I know that you two consist of most of the core development yeah, the just, art need to and programming. What about the know a bit more of it, I guess, but they can't talk so a bit more about it without spoiling everything. By Japanese yeah. Oh, yeah, the t-shirt. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, right. So she, uh, Michelle, um, she is doing the soundtrack for the game. Um, Japanese Breakfast is one of my favorite bands right now. Uh, it's incredible to have well, that I mean, on board. It all just came together so beautifully in the trailer, and I know that you guys are really regular about updating, you know, blogs, sharing what's going on with the development. Where can people go to find more? Uh, so just have the screen to, to pop up. Shedwick Treg and Shedwick Stan, or to sablegame.com. Lovely gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Once again, the name of the game is Sable. Our next title is one that has been in development, even showing up in our very first PC gaming show. It's Cloud oh, Imperium Games. Did you guys hear about Star Citizen title, recently? Star Citizen. No. Let's see what they have in store. There was a Reddit post of them not meeting multiple deadlines or something for content they promised. And with certain countries' laws, they're protected as consumers. And so they're asking for refunds, but the development team's stonewalling them. Oof. Isn't this the expensive game? Yep. Okay, just making sure. This is the super expensive Kickstarter game. That costs a lot of money to play, and then there's fees on top of playing. 
Yep, like you're actually buying real in-game insurance for yeah. ships and crap. Like yeah. it's ridiculous. <sighs> it's cool when you have an ambitious title, but when you literally can't ever finish it, uh, doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> No man scam. <laughs> uh... Shut up. What? I was stretching. It was really PC loud. Just Cause 4 is at three conferences now. Why did Square Enix need <laughs> the fucking conference? The final season. All new gameplay footage of Hitman. And now your host, Sean Plot. As we do each year at the PC Gaming Show, in addition to talking about games, we're also going to talk about some of the upcoming hardware trends. To join me in talking about it is the senior brand manager from Acer. It's Eric Ackerson. Thanks for joining me up here, Eric. Sean, really excited to be here. Now, I, I just want to straight up ask, what are the, some of the big trends that consumers can be expecting right now? Well, right now we're developing some new products, particularly in the display space. We want to take the experience to the next level. To help with that, one of our new products is the Predator X27. It's an incredible gaming display. For instance, it's 4K and 120 hertz refresh. The users can overclock to 144. But re what really takes it over to the next level is the inclusion of G-Sync HDR. Yeah, now I hear a lot about HDR. Can you explain a little more in detail what that is and what that means? Well, there's a, quite a bit that goes into it, but uh, for the purpose of this conversation, the fact that there are 384 individual backlit zones, so the backlighting can be individually controlled, really bright, very dark. It makes a, a better contrast on screen. Each of them are individually controlled. The brightness of the screen is far above a typical display. Typical, you're looking at 300 to 400 nits. Like I said, for the purpose of this discussion, with the Predator X I don't understand any of that. Help. And you know, some of the titles that were showcased uh, just now, there's a wide variety of some photorealistic, some with a really iconic art style. How does HDR contribute to that big range we see in gaming? Well, one of the big things that helps is the color gamut that's available with these displays. We're able to do 99% of the Adobe color gamut, so it's better representing the vision of the art director. Yeah, and some of the games that you see on screen that support HDR, Mass Effect Andromeda, Far Cry 4, Nino Kuni 2, uh, again, you won't see them in HDR right now unless you have an HDR monitor. It doesn't work that way. We can't just stream it to you. But, you know, it brings me to one of my next questions about PC gamers tend to have a huge range of possible budgets. What are the different sort of products to look for at those price ranges? Well, I mean, we cover the, the gamut from uh, very simple and to the point to high performance esports products or multi view surround multi display products. But we also go really crazy sometimes. We decide, we put our engineers to the test. What can you do if you have yeah, no yeah. limit? So, one of the projects we've worked on is something called the Predator 21X. This is a 21 inch curved screen uh, laptop with a mechanical keyboard. How do you and good answer. graphics curved. cards? Yeah. Science, we have materials. <laughs> we, did, we did a really good thing. It's not wrong. But you know what? To, yeah. To be serious, but not just to joke, we actually have to ship this with a <laughs> case to protect the laptop, and it sells. Yeah. For it $9, sells $9, for nine thousand dollars. All right. We sold uh, every yeah. single unit we could make. It's for those rich so kids who care. We cover every spectrum of gaming. You know, you brought up this Predator laptop. You brought up the Predator monitors at the start of this segment. Where can people go to hear more about, or even? pick one up once they stop being sold out. So the, that's, the good news is that we're shipping now. Our customers, partners are selling them. The bad news the is really that like already five. sold out of this new Predator X27 monitor. I believe Micro Center is still in stock. Amazon will be in stock again soon. Well, mm. thank you so much for joining yeah. me on stage, Eric. Frankie is awaiting in the balcony. Wow, guess what's happening in China? Time. The PC has video always games. been the platform for crazy Loot ideas. The coins gone viral. In the next game, Genesis Nvidia Alpha Shield. One, you build and manage Perfect a space world vessel, farm is, uh, gonna be, uh, I guess it's not technically publishing, but they're gonna be working with Steam to bring Steam to China. Oh, and 
you can take hmm. DNA from the aliens you encounter across the galaxy, splice them with members of your crew to create new life forms. Just a typical day at the office. Oh, I, let's take a look. I've seen this game. Greetings, Genesis. Commander. What? You have been sent to Quadrant Alpha One. The mission is to find a new home for the crew on board. You make a new ship. ship. You need to keep it protected Expand as well. You can like have like leaks on the ship. Aliens can board. Aliens can board. DNA. They don't have my permission to board. To and they can infest your ship. Okay. Ready the your yeah, that's why I take run. a flamethrower to their ass. <laughs> Bitches. I played a demo at EGX 2017. It didn't play the best as a demo. Maybe as a full game, it's better. Or I was just trash. Number four. Switch win. <laughs> now, if you didn't catch the pre-show quiz, you might oh. be wondering I who he was gonna my fucking body dad. is. <laughs> oh, well, Ladies and gentlemen, is Webster from Drake's Cakes, one of the PC gaming show's sponsors this year. And he's got a cool competition for you. The Drake's Does he have a microphone? Cakes giveaway. Oh yes. Pack <laughs> <laughs> in a gathering of PC games, <laughs> games, concerts, panels, exhibits, and tournaments. It's like a four-day LAN party, festival, workshop, and concert rolled into one. I like this new host. I think they had Rachel last year, but she's clearly doing the hosting for Twitch itself. Trip to I like this mm. new host, though. So if that's you, hit me. Yeah, yeah Drake the Duck is hella. I am free. Webster, my man duck, this is very generous of She you. loves eating men on the weekends. And by entering, guys, you will get a discount code <clears throat> to get your hands on some delicious Drake's Cakes available Adult jokes. on Amazon. And if you're at E3 itself, don't forget you can meet Webster in person at the E3. Well, maybe she literally meant to bore them. Where he'll be giving you a drink, <laughs> and tasty treats all week. Oh, God. So oh, God. Him, give him a don't start on that. I don't, I don't need this dog. So, if you have ever dreamt of spending a weekend knee deep in one of Earth's best gaming festivals, visit he's just standing there. dot com forward slash drinks cake and enter. He's like now almost passed out because the suit's got so goddamn hot. <laughs> all right, so, Webster, all this hosting has got me a bit. It has to be hot there. How They're in fucking the LA, dude. The next bro, you get from you get from Clay. You don't say so peck in front of a happens. duck, dude. Is that Don't Starve? It is. The amount of support for Don't Starve Dungeon Crawler. Damn, everything's just out to get you, huh? Where is there? Why is there a town and city? Have that always? Has that always been in Don't Starve? Nope. Nope. And how are you not gonna starve or whatever? Yeah, whatever. It's a huge That's cool. expansion. It looks like. Hamlet. Don't starve Hamlet. December twenty eighteen. Don't starve Hamlet. Our next title is the next installment in a series that never fails to make me laugh. Just it's gonna skim just past Cause 4, that huge and thing. they have oh a God. brand new engine to bring the level of delicious insanity one notch up. All right, Let's you guys ready for the tornado the again? Apex engine and just cause uh, 4. You got damn right I am. Not pig cities, I said cities. They have one more weather effect to show off here. That'll that'll be the the hook. <laughs> There it is! You see the tornado? You see the top of it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, does Unrivaled have two L's? It does now. Well, Man, I can, I can tell so much about this HDR lighting. Improved HDR lighting. It's Not only like, one L, they fucked up the trailer. Not like we can tell. Tornado? <laughs> there it is. 
Maybe that's why they showed the console versions at the other ones, and so the PC gamer version looked better. <laughs> why you throw that square? Why you have to <laughs> We're just gonna have everything better Joining anywhere but you. To talk about it What's on the point? Stage now. From Avalanche Studios, it's Francesco and, or excuse me, Francesco Antolini and No, Adam someone tweeted Day9 right welcome. now. Make him pause his phone. Why did you have a conference? <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? So oh, I'm sure that just because four dead stuff. It's a very nice uh, piece of tech. It's not just beautiful. Yeah, just tweet Day9 saying, bits. why did you it's have a conference? But boy, it actually works. It's fully physicalized. Yeah. This means that it's thrown in the world. Wreaking havoc and uh, it's not it's not just like a background way. piece, it's no, actually impacting. No, no, no. What is it? Just goes Hello? And you go this is just calls, yeah. this is just calls, <laughs> you go and play with it. You know, throughout the trailers that I've seen, it seems to be a lot of different environments that are available throughout. Can you talk to me about those? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the most important things to us with this installment of Just Cause was bringing a lot you more variety imagine, into the game. Like, that how, how many things, people did not actually, like, the proofread this so trailer? So kind of region of, like, say, southern Italy, like we had last time. Uh -huh. Now you have... Just let it go. ...deserts, uh, grasslands... Unrivaled. Uh, all of which, you know, are rendered beautifully with the new Apex engine. Now, something that's very important to me is some of my favorite features... Maybe they thought about Parallel and they were like, three. yeah, it's the same thing. Like the that's the one thing that's missing, Dandy, is hooks. asteroids like, falling are those coming back from the Cause sky in Just Cause 4. Everything you love from Just Cause 3 is back. Good. But Good. Asteroids burn up in the atmosphere. Just better. There's more Big to asteroids. Do, more to discover. For example, the Grappling Hook is completely custom customizable. <laughs> uh, the combat model has been completely reworked, redesigned, enhanced, or new weapon, mm -hmm. new enemies, uh, new AI. Uh, we've got extreme weather that yeah. interacts with I mean, grappling hook does, and yeah, uh, parachute. Right? The wind that we saw from yes. the tornado, is it just yes. like basic wind effects also get incorporated as well? Again, it just goes, so nothing, just an effect. So if there is wind, it's physics, and acts with your parachute, grappling hook. So nice. Yeah. Well, where can people go to get some, we'll call it first-hand footage of what Just Cause 4 can deliver? Uh, they can check it out at justcause.com forward slash E3. In, uh, in case you guys wanted to see that tornado again. That's right. Believe it or not, E3 hasn't started yet. <laughs> Starts <laughs> tomorrow. So yep. June 12th. You guys 14th, heard about this game that was leaked in so three conferences called Just Cause 4? Just Cause 4. <laughs> Now our next I heard there's a tornado in it. My all-time favorite IPs. Oh, I can't I'm wait to dead. To talk to you about The Walking Dead. <laughs> Overkill Software and Starbreeze are the creators of Payday and Payday 2. Therefore, it goes without saying that these studios are some of the most talented makers of cooperative shooters. And their next one is I don't know, that's weird to me, because I don't remember hearing them about say them saying the first gameplay that they were doing Walking Dead at some point. Dead. And keep your oh, this was a couple of years back. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually first heard about it here at PC Gaming Show. I don't remember, though. He's finally getting get see some gameplay. Maybe. We were so many things. Husbands and wives, doctors and teachers, writers and architects. Can't believe they've just re added Bill. Ended, all that <laughs> Kinda gameplay maybe. Every day we fight for more than survival. An engine at least. We fight to build a new life. Fight! Oh, Oof. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked, Steven. Uh... And I have more good news for fans of The Walking Dead. Overkill's game for The Walking Dead, of course, coming soon. But we have a second completely different uh... Walking Dead game that we're going yeah, to talk about right now. 
This is Telltale's The Walking Dead, the final season. Joining me on stage to talk about it is the lead writer, James Windler, and the voice of Clementine herself, Melissa Hutchison. So, Popcorn, you gonna play that game on street? Yes, I actually just got the third one. So, yes. After we're just on the street. Thank you. Now, I, I want to ask right away for, you know, people who've played through the first three seasons of The Walking Dead, in terms of the gameplay, what's some of the familiar and what's some of the new? Okay, so for people who don't know Telltale, um, we are a story-based company. Um, we do, we focus on narrative. Uh, we've had our roots in um, the, the old school point-and-click adventure games, but we've developed our own cinematic style and um, we never almost a engine, though. Um, mechanic, like our choice wheel. Yeah. Um, and that's that's all familiar. They don't have time. Um, that should, you know, the choices branch the narrative. Um, They're too busy making year, games on have, everything. Um, like traditionally, like combat and action. They just pump out. Um, we've done games with now. QTEs and yeah, yeah, like, 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 like swipes and and button mashes and all of that. This year, um, with the final season, we're we're um, introducing uh, segments of unscripted combat. Yeah, see, we see some of this right here. Clementine! Yeah. So, kind of probably just brutalizes a zombie yes. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course she is. <laughs> and oh, yeah, so we also have, like, the, um, the orbital cam, like, the over-the-shoulder camera. Um, so that's, yeah. like, offering our players um, uh, opportunities to explore our environments, which you can also see from the B-roll, the right. um, is, like, they're looking really, really good oh, with this yeah. graphic, bla um, graphic black art style that we're employing. Yeah, because in the previous games, it was much more of a directed camera from scene to scene, but now you can really sort of explore the environment on your own. Absolutely, yeah, and, yeah. Now, I want to ask about the story. I mean, Telltale games always have that as the central feature. Where does The Walking Dead, the final season, start off? Okay, so it starts, um, we've, you know, Clementine has been on the road for a long time. We are post-time jump in the comics. Mm -hmm. um, she's been on the road, she's traveling um, with a, a AJ, who is an orphan boy, yeah. um, who is the closest thing that she has to family. Um, but they're reaching the end of it. They are like running out of steam on the road. It's like proving to be untenable. Um, so, um, the final season, Clementine uh, discovers a, a, a school, a secluded school, um, where there are no adults, um, and essentially sees that this might be a place that they could call home. Yeah, and what are the sort of challenges that she's going to face throughout the season? Oh, uh, all kinds of challenges, yeah. yeah. Like I can imagine that camera would be time. kind yeah, of interesting, of like rendering um, a corner to get attacked by a zombie if it realizing. Like the, at some point, there are going to be, be adults okay. coming in, um, representing external mm -hmm. threats that she's going to have to deal with. Now, Melissa, I, I want to ask what your experience has been like, because it's rare to have, you know, a, a voice actress journey along with yeah. a character in a multi-year journey. I mean, how long ago was the first I was, recording that you did? Well, I, it was 2012, but we might have even started in 2011. I don't know. I'd... We're not going to do math on it. Yeah, That's we're not always doing a math. bad idea. That's not happening right now. Um, it's been a long time, and it's not only just playing one character, it's actually been aging with her, <laughs> growing with her, and... Uh, falling deeper and deeper in love with her and, uh, you know, starting as this young child who's, you know, as playing as Lee, it's your job to protect her and then organically moving through all these seasons and now yeah. you're playing as Clementine. I mean, really, this is a fan-driven game, so this final season is for the fans and, you know, you're going to be playing as Clementine and protecting AJ and uh, this is just near and dear to my heart. And yeah, I mean, yeah. how do you feel about the fact that this is the end? Ah, well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's bittersweet. I'm super sad. I'm super psyched. Uh, you know, I'm, of course, it'll, it'll be sad to end her journey, yeah. but uh, I, I'm really looking forward. Obviously, I'm surrounded by talent with Telltale Games and I have no doubt that the writers and the creatives are going to crush it. So, sad but happy? It's all very confusing. I'm a very confused <laughs> human right now. Let's just put it that way. Well, I'm someone who's played through all of the Telltale Walking Dead games. Oh, I'd cool. love to know when the final season is coming out. August 14th. Um, yeah, we ship August 14th and it's available for pre-order right now. Be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for joining me on stage Thank today. You. Once August again, that's 14th. the Walking Dead Thank game. Thank you. Finally or you can find it on Steam as well. For our next title, Frankie, we're going to head back to you on the balcony. Next up, have I got a treat for you. Coming straight out of Finland from Nola Games is a magical action roguelike that asks, is that a wand in your pocket? Are you uh. just trying to kill me? 
Don't let the retro art style fool you. Noita is set oh, in a I know this game. generated world where every pixel is Do you? simulated. Yes, because like whoa. every pixel is generated. It's really fucking cool. What about that wow, pixel? Wow, this does look really cool. Holy shit. Yeah. What about that pixel? There was like a black that? hole spell or something where it like pulled up all the pixels of an area. It was really fucking cool. Did you guys play games like this in, uh, in, in school? Where, like, pixels do that? Just like um, a did. simulation game. You, uh, yeah, sand I know what games, you're talking like about. Sand games. Yeah, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh my god, those were fun. Yeah. To just, like, kill time. This is just an adventure sand game. Which is a really cool concept. Oh, yeah. oh dude, the guy died. Aw. That's the end of the game. He it's spoiled a, yeah, it. Yeah, it's a roguelike. Our next title is one that that's very near really and dear cool. to my heart. As it it's is just a wish list to one of my favorite childhood okay. games, Theme Hospital. Joining me to talk about it are the two founders of Two Point Studios. To talk about Two Point Hospital, Join me in welcoming Dr. Webley and Dr. Carr. I'd like to see your licenses. Wow. Great suits. I mean, I gotta ask, as two fully trained medical professionals, oh, how does God. one run oh. a hospital in Two Point Hospital? Oh. What's going on with the bike? What's wrong with the bike? Wait, oh my gosh, is the stethoscope <laughs> your Oh my God. Oh, you know what? Oh. So take them off. Well, take them off. Okay. How do we run a hospital? So Two Point Hospital is a game about designing uh. and uh, building. <laughs> <laughs> Did we account for audio <laughs> difficulties in the top. bingo card? Yeah, yeah. Listen, you said no, we've control. already got it. Yeah. How about right. Look out here, you said. Yeah, no, just look so, straight at the ground. There's a little customization. <laughs> there's. Is this not working at all? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, doing great. Can carry you carry on? on? I'll carry on then. Uh, yeah, a lot of customization, a lot Dude, of Dude, I don't think you fix someone by world, shaking them to which, pieces uh, into a machine. With all these different characters, yeah, just did. Oh, God, really oh, God man. The Crazy Craft's going to be great and, this year. Uh, you have fun in Two Point County exploring different regions and curing people with oh, different ailments. Oh, God. So, as you can see on that the screen, wasn't even really cringe. Got, so, that was like, we ow, my ears. Research this. It's uh, mm -hmm. a certain anima. And also yeah, but it's cringy that he's people, fucking getting that close to him, uh, having to can, fucking uh, talk to his tie. Be because he could just take it off. Do research yeah. so you can unlock new wonderful cures. Yeah. You know, saying uh, everything, isn't it? Sorry, I yeah, didn't no, know your mic was That was yeah. a bit backfilling. Carry yeah, on. so, I mean, no, no t tell me about it. Like, what is the sort of late game the late yeah, game cure cancer. That you'll be playing through because this looks like it's quite deep into the running of a hospital. Yeah, that guy's missing on. his so, head, uh, you and now you're about you're, to you're, take you know, away you're, his arm. You're researching and you're you're training up staff. You're diagnosing illnesses, and uh, you're hopefully. This curing looks kind of cool, though. The then, game. Yeah. Off, I see this malady. Yeah, I see this malady called turtle head. Can you explain oh, yeah. oh, what that is? Turtle yes. head. Yes, it's it's when the head. Oh, I've seen this game so as well at some point. Don't remember when though. Oh, so his head's not gone. It's just slightly. turtle. And, uh, oh. Have to be, uh, extracted. So now let's mess and, with uh, them. Mark, how, how's yeah, it get well, extracted? this is uh, something you <laughs> maybe. Uh... We've all had, we've all been there. Yay! Yeah, this is one where <laughs> he's you know, a little bit of suction passed out awesome. a little bit. Yeah. And uh, he's gone. And out it comes. <laughs> yeah. Now we I, had to research how to do that. That's actually a, a real illness. <laughs> Are you yeah, kidding me? That's yeah. real? Now, wow. What a shitty disease. There's a Sega cabinet. Look at that. At some <laughs> point. What, what is a monobrow uh, infestation? Yeah. Well, monobrow is... That's pretty funny. You know, follically enhanced. enhanced yes. Yeah. Yeah. Problem. We've, We've all been there. Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't. No, but, okay. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, it needs to be diagnosed and cured pretty quickly. If it doesn't, it'll fester. In Sonic's and, uh, on it. You might shed uh, <laughs> a bit of hair. And it can, it will actually leave the body and it needs to be got rid of uh, before yes. the health inspectors arrive. It looks like the monobrows are multiplying in the hospital. They, they're breed oh, yeah, they're big breeders, the monobrows. Yeah, like Kill streak. They like oh. dirty places. Uh, <laughs> it's like a fun it's game. So you've got to keep your hospital clean and well maintained. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to breed and you'll have a trouble. I want to ask about sort of how the game evolves over time. Because, you know, Theme Hospital was very mission-based. How yeah. does the experience of running a hospital change as the game goes on? 
Yeah, so once you've started your first hospital, it's, you know, it's a pretty simple affair, and then you move on through Two Point County. There's different regions. There's a cold region. There's warm regions with uh, infect, you know, contagious diseases. And, you know, there's... Oh, cold regions, regions there's rich well. regions. Yeah. yeah. So we've got volcanoes. Yeah. Effects, yeah. yeah we've, we've got all got... sorts of wonderful... Uh, weird effects can happen in different parts of the world. So it might struggle to manage your hospital empire because a yeah. volcano went off nearby. Yeah, it's about spinning plates, isn't it? You've got everything set up nicely and then something happens. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'd love to know more information mm -hmm. about when Two Point Hospital is coming out. Well, we're coming out to uh, fall and uh, you can check us out by going onto our Steam page and hopefully wish listing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're coming later in the year. We're told to say. No. Well, sometime this year, just no official date. Well, I'm personally, again, really mm -hmm. looking forward to it coming out. Thanks so much for joining me. <laughs> Dr. Thank you, Doctor. And doctor Thank you. Thank talk you. about Two Point Hospital. <laughs> now, our second Battle Royale game of the afternoon takes a fantasy RPG-esque bent, and you may have even seen oh, it. Oh, God, it there it is. The I knew it. Game. Let's take a look at High Res's Realm Where Royale. Are we dropping, boys? <laughs> Uh... There's some neat ideas in it. Okay, apparently he has a space stuff. <laughs> God damn it. Joining me to talk about Realm Royale is the executive producer at High Res Studios. It's Rory Nubro, aka Dry Bear. Mr. Dry Bear, what separates Realm Royale from other types of battle royale games in the genre? It's a good question. So before you go up into the air to determine where you land on the map, you'll actually choose from a list of fantasy classes like mage or hunter or assassin and specify a unique play style before you land. How do these different classes work? So the engineer will be more about bunkering down, putting up shields, putting down turrets. The assassin will get behind the lines using stealth, use a sniper rifle to take out targets. Yeah. And the warrior will just jump in there throwing axes and being crazy. And you know, in some of the streams that I've watched, it also seemed like there were abilities, not just the loot and find stuff. Can you talk to me about how the ability mechanics work? Once you choose a class, it'll come with a set of abilities, and you'll actually be upgrading these during the match, but it specifies as your oh, play yeah. style. And so as you're looting, abilities as well as armor and weapons will come out of the chests. Okay. You'll start equipping that and determining the play style you want, and so you can just really specify. And you know, you, you mentioned this a little bit, I've seen it on stream. Talk to me about crafting in the game. I mean, how does crafting work in a game where there's a constantly shrinking play circle? We're really excited about this. So strewn across the map, Can't there are places like forges. And so once you go to the <laughs> forge, you'll mostly. collect shards from disenchanting loot you find as you're going Hit. about. And you'll use these shards to start Hip. crafting legendary gear, Hip. very powerful pieces that everyone wants. Hey, yeah. Once you start the forge, a smokestack will appear above the forge and everyone comes over to like fight. Like a mini objective even. Big team fight. So I know that Realm Royale is currently available for free on Steam, but I hear that you have some goodies that people can check out that are E3 exclusive. That's right. So free on Steam, we're actually out for less than a week now, and we are already number four on Steam charts. And this yeah. week at, at E3, through Mixer, if you stream on Mixer and you're playing, the streamer that gets closest to the Crown Royale will enter into the hype zone, and so everyone will see you on, you'll be featured on the main page of Mixer. And you'll have a chance to win the Jailbird Chicken Skin, which is our first piece of cosmetic. It's a little chicken with like a little Jailbird, like, yeah. like prisoner outfit, and just box around, it's hilarious. Yeah, and if you don't know the chicken mechanic, seriously, please look it up right now. Rory, thanks so much for joining me on stage to talk about Realm Royale. Once thanks, again, sir. it's for free on Steam right now. Our next game is one that was shown at last year's PC Gaming Show, and Frankie has some updates of what they've been up to. Yes, Sean, as you may remember, our next game is made hey, by a core team of just two people. It's called Ooblets, and it's a farming and creature collecting indie inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon, and Animal Crossing. Is this the one from Double this Fine? Fresh trailer features or they're a publishing at least? Unique combat system, I along with plenty don't remember exactly. And environments. Let's take a gander. I want those two to fight. Die. They'll be done soon. They were scheduled to end two minutes ago. Uh oh. They're going over, shutting down. I wanted to get a, some kind of power nap in before Sony. <laughs> Looks like you're not going to. 
There we go, double fine. It's it's nice that PC gaming show is actually really interesting this year. Yeah. It's cool. I can't believe we've gone from capturing creatures to battle to just growing them to battle. Reminds me of an indie game I saw that's 2D and it's about following cats that follow you and you're a merchant uh, <laughs> and the cats assist you in being a merchant. I forget what it's called though, but it's not coming out anytime soon either. Coming to PC so. and Xbox One when? Switch win. And they could fit that into the Microsoft now, conference. It wouldn't be a PC gaming yep. show without a dash of strategy, which is why I'm. Oh my God! Ended already. A chance to share with you the nope. next. We still have another Whoa. battle royale. A new game. Anno game? Hello, Battles Ubisoft. What? What were you doing, Ubisoft? Listen, they couldn't fit it into the conference. Square? <laughs> that's because Square, Square had a conference, so that's why Ubisoft couldn't fit this one into theirs. You should just lend some of their games to Square. It's like, you know what, Square, we know you, we know you have an hour and a half to fill, you know you've got 30 minutes at the moment. Just have this game for it. No, no, that's fine, you take it, you take it. Yeah, pollution. Uh, I think they're invading. Where's Gandhi with his nukes? That's it. God damn it! Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the executive producer, Burkhart Ratheiser, and community developer, Bastian Thun. Oh, I know exactly why they decided to not put him on Ubisoft. Gentlemen, welcome to the stage. I want to Maybe. begin right, right away. I wasn't paying right. attention. Is that Warren Spector? I haven't seen or experienced the Anno series. Oh no, this guy's presenting well. I thought they were going to just like. not want him to present yeah, well, because that, he was awkward or something. But he's Look how many fine. cards he still seen, has. Um, only um, real-time strategy game. And um, it's kind of uh, mixing um, uh, city building together with um, economic simulation mm -hmm. and naval warfare. And at its core, it's, um, it's a sandbox game. So um, you have a, a, free, um, a vast amount of freedom yeah. to explore, um, to um, explore the world, and build huge cities. And I, I mean, I could just let the stream go if you guys can fill an hour. Of the yeah, we can fill an hour if you need to. Well, <laughs> sure. Yeah, we have an hour and a half, but yeah, it's like an hour and a half. Hour and a half we yeah, so much, um, I'd be yeah we have to finish then. this up and so talk about all the games. Had, uh, two, Plus, we can um, discuss a little bit about PlayStation. Uh, yep, as long as the long as streams don't have any issues on your end, unless we have like any way to contact you, and, uh, wake you up. Also big yeah, plus. Yes. So, so chat, if stream goes down, so literally just really spam hero. chat, and what are some of the like spam it we'll hard, so we notice. So it's it's kind of. But I'm thinking uh, uh, we'll be fine. You start, you if anything, first, I'm sure um, Poppy could like stream it from your end or something. <laughs> Yeah, and then it's a kind of, <laughs> kind of a not the stream. Maybe I could have like a little waiting screen or something if it got to that point. Well, there will be nothing. I'll be back well before Sony, like ten minutes before Sony. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, we'll be fine. All right, go get a nap then. And then if Anthony will, we'll keep calling you on Discord or something. Yeah, I, I have his number. If you have your phone off silent. So last year at Gamescom, when we actually revealed the game, we decided on, you know what, it's pre-alpha, revealed the game, we invited the community... I can't believe Austin's already fallen asleep. Member of our, uh, <laughs> he just, he took off the headset so and collapsed right next to Wait, where'd Austin go? We give constant weekly, uh, he's he's <laughs> taking a power nap. He fell asleep? I know, I know he got I'm real really tired. Good. But we're we're still live. I can't believe the streamer is sleeping. I can't believe we're gonna shut down. <laughs> yeah, technically this. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Who cares? What? I'm sure a lot of people were fucking co-streaming fucking E3 and were falling asleep during the stream anyway. So. Fucking uh, EA, I mean. Yeah. It's not like we're bored right now. It's just like this is an all-day thing right now. Like we've been live since. 
Let's do it like uh, Twelve. I don't, know. I don't know about yeah, Eastern time, but like twelve, eleven a.m. Eleven? So wow. Central. So twelve. Yeah, noon. Yeah, noon no, EST. So, been live so, since five p.m. My team. It's been about seven hours so far. Seven half hours. Almost, almost eight hours. We're nearing eight. Yep, and we have another about two, three hours to go. <laughs> You can go to anaunion.com. <laughs> Who knows what's Sony? Where you can vote on one of five ships in the game. They're just gonna walk up. It's gonna be like, here's the games. Fuck off. Goodbye. We will allow you to design your own ship variant. So the winner of that uh, first. Can we get a hashtag? Uh, bandana. Nodes, drawings, 3D models, whatever you like. <laughs> the winner of that contest will actually make it into the game. Now, where is the website that people can go to again to get the most information right now? Excuse yeah, me. Check out anno-union.com. That's basically our big community platform, and we want to to invite <laughs> specially strategy gamers. PC so no date for anno 1800. Com, developing the game, sharing feedback. Just check it out. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you for joining me on stage to talk about anno 1800. Final <laughs> battle royale of the night. Next title is the final battle royale of the night, and Frankie is going to be talking about. Oh my God, oh, tiny build. Maybe not what you'd expect. Publisher Tiny Build is what? known for discovering. You were making a joke about it in a musical. Tell me this is a joke now too. Speedrunners and Hello Neighbor among their catalog of hits. And now I'm delighted to be able to bring you the world exclusive reveal of a game developed by Galvanic Games oh. in cooperation with Exposum. Okay, I get it now. Rapture Rejects is Battle Royale as you've never seen one before, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not. Top down, isometric, cartoony. So, we're talking about this is probably going to be an actual video game. Let's, take a look at what Let's go. The not that Battle Royale isn't, but that it's not just another Battle Royale game. Who the hell knows? Let's see what it is. Yeah, let's see. I'm kind of interested with it being part of explosivism. Every time I see that fucking logo with the fucking <laughs> guy that drew Rock's voice, I forgot his name. God, every day I strive to be closer to well, the guy from uh what's the name I pray that when judgment day that most holy no time to explain upon us, yeah same wavelength yeah look. Heaven, that I may live in eternal glory by your side amen hmm oh no <laughs> Oh my god! I can't believe God starring his own battle royale. He's taking his drunk roommate. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Rapture rejects. Oh, this just looks like stupid fun. I'll take it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's a really good title, Rapture Rejects, huh? I'll play it. Okay, that's okay. fine. You convince me. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we got to show that trailer. That's so great. <laughs> Our final game that we'll be showcasing oh. this evening is from hey, the most Hitman. stealth action franchise in gaming, oh. the Hitman series. Why do you need your own event, Hitman? Hitman? From Hitman 2. <laughs> Because Square Enix kicked them out. <laughs> yeah, but Warner Brothers did a little thing. Welcome to Miami, 47. Welcome to Miami. Rapture Rejects also on Steam to wishlist. Available 2018-ish. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox. A day of high octane thrills and two very public targets. Oh, 
<laughs> I'll get this game. Why not? Okay, I want to kill someone with the coconut. This looks better than what they presented with through Warner Brothers. I don't know why they didn't show this. I won the flamingo with it. Because more people would watch E3. That's why. November yeah. 13th. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not playing that mode. Yeah, that looks like shit. Missed opportunity to make a true co-op mode for it. Oh, maybe they'll clear up whether or not it's episodic. I'm really hoping it's not. Oh, we talked about that. I'm saying. Jacob Mickelson, join me up here, Jacob. Come on out. We gotta talk. Assassination. Hey, Sean. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks for joining me. I mean, right away. Tell me, what is Agent Forty Seven doing in Miami? Well, he's there to uh, yeah pay a visit to Sharon Robert Knox, who uh, part of the Kronstadt uh, Empire, and yeah. We all know how that ends, right? <laughs> well, given that it's a Hitman game, I have some hints. And, you know, I always felt like in the Hitman games, the environment was so critical, trying to study and trying to understand it. What are some of the elements in Miami that will show up in Hitman 2? Yeah, well, absolutely. Miami is, uh, I think it's one of the biggest events we've ever created in, in the game. And uh, in Miami, we have, of course, the race as the centerpiece. Yeah. But being this super high detailed sandbox, we also go to great lengths to actually create all the surrounding uh, bits and pieces uh, like you have here, backstage area. Of yeah. course, we also have that in Miami. So pits and paddocks, there's an emergency room and so on. So all the facilities needed in order for you to kind of make your own way through the yeah. mission and take advantage of the locations and all the different disguises and items you stumble upon as you yeah. move in closer to your targets. And in terms of the mechanics, I know that there's going to be a lot of the familiar feels, but what are some of the brand new mechanics that are in Hitman? Yeah, some of the new stuff is, uh, for instance, uh, the crowds we saw so here in Miami. Uh, yeah. First of all, there's more than ever. Yeah, uh, there's, there's, We're close to 2,000 people now in the scenes. And uh, on top of that, we also introduced a new crowd mechanic where you, uh, you can dip into the crowd if you get in trouble. So as long as they are not mm -hmm. uh, fleeing or running away, then they're there for you to hide in, so in case you get chased by guards. Another new thing is the picture in picture mechanic is actually really quite nice. Right. So you can keep track of at least more than just what's on your so screen. If you're setting up traps and stuff like that, you can kind of keep track of where the important characters are. Uh -huh. And last but not least, we have uh, the fan favorite, right? which is the sniper briefcase uh, is back. But this time it's not only for, for sniper rifles, it's also for all the other things you want to carry around kind of without causing too much attention to yourself. And I want to ask about some of the weapons and the disguises that have been showing up throughout these trailers. Yeah, we go to great lengths. I think the, the, the theme of, uh, of this showing is going to be the fish. It's really uh, it's a studio favorite. Uh, we, <laughs> we're having a, a lot of laughs uh, at yeah. that, right? And then, and then, of course, you just saw it in the kitchen as a frying pan. So we all know the kitchen is the most dangerous house, uh, room in your house, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so of course. Also comes in Hitman. And I, I want to ask about some of my favorite content from Hitman, things like elusive targets, limited time events. Will those be making a comeback? Absolutely. So there's still going to be escalations for you to kind of challenge the game in many different ways. Uh, there's going to be uh, challenge packs, uh, mm -hmm. again, new challenge for you. And then, of course, the elusive targets that pop up for a short period of time only. And you have one shot at this or, yeah, oh, yeah. robust. As my final question, yeah. the expected question, when does Hitman 2 come out? Hitman 2 comes out November, thir November 13, and if you pre-order right now, you also get access to a new game mode called Sniper Assassin, where you get to play as Agent 47, and also, for the first time in the franchise, you can play along with a friend in the co-op mode. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for coming out. I'm super looking forward to Hitman 2. Okay, I might be the worst Hitman ever, but I try hard. Now, Jacob, I'm going to thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to escort you off to the right. So you're going to rush off this way because coming in from the left for the first time ever, vaguely nearby me, it's the co-host Frankie. Come here, Frankie. <laughs> okay. They let me come down from the balcony for good behavior. Excellent. <laughs> well, Frankie, we did it. We the did. PC Gaming Show is done. Thank you so much for joining us to host this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for all Everyone's of you. Everyone's doing try hard. Thanks to Will Turn and joined us today. It was a blast. <laughs> Thanks to Twitch chat. I know that everything you said was appropriate and intelligently thought out. And of course, this year, we're curating even more great PC games from the Facebook booth in E3 South Hall. Last. And of course, not least, a huge thank you to all our wonderful sponsors who let the PC Gaming Show come back for a fourth straight year. They are 
High Res Studios, Digital Extremes, Archangel Hellfire, Team 17, Stardock Entertainment, Acer, Predator, Improbable, Oculus Rift, Drake's Cakes, Tripwire, Frontier Developments, and Square Enix. We hope you have I'm not sure at the convention hall then. And go you go and stand in the line for the demos. Thank you. Oh boy. Welcome back to E3. You know, I just realized the one was the bad thing about Austin being asleep at the moment you, is he can't Dana go to E3 Frankie discussion screen. Us through a lot of games. <laughs> no, no, that's okay, because we can just discuss over these guys. We're about yeah, exactly. It'll be fine-ish. We'll uh, they shouldn't be too loud, so... Uh, we've got a few minutes they might be too loud. Of course, then we've got, I can, um, well, then shit. I can definitely say solid improvement over the last few PC gaming shows. So exciting little yeah, it was definitely... Actually, uh, interesting. They weren't just sitting around about. forever. What? What Plus, they had a lot it? of it's actually game interesting show. games okay, to show. Stuff, some of it we yeah, like some of it brand interesting new. games. So your hand. Not what that like sit down with devs is too bad. PC. Sometimes it's just the the previous year. Sometimes That's they lasted a bit too long on games I, that I, weren't enticing to everyone. Not only were they just enticing, it was that they they were clearly just filling time. It felt like. I was reading, I was potentially, reading yeah, and then so they didn't the they didn't really talk about the graphics too much as well, which so also helps. Again, I know there's like little talk about oh, the HDR shading stuff. I went off to the toilet during that, so I didn't patch any of it. It seemed like it lasted only like two minutes. Just an Acer ad. Yeah, kind of like what like, AMD no, did the previous years. Zero, yeah, but I, 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 came, I came back to like the $9,000 laptop, which is... Oh boy. It closes so with a, a vote for curled a screen or whatever with science and it, you need blah, 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 blah. You need to use the case they give you or else it will break. Probably not a good design idea. So... Uh, without much further ado, should we uh, should we talk about the video games? So yeah, I'm sure we'll probably just kind of name them and move on for a lot of these. Probably. I mean, we can talk about at least what we saw a little bit if we remember. Where some of them I already have mostly forgotten. But this this list is well. I started halfway through with Xbox, but this is my longest list so far. Yep, I think this is the is that the longest list or tied with Xbox? I mean, to as a, yeah, it's up there. Sure Xbox fun. would definitely be longer uh, because all the indie games, I just put them all in one section, so it's just below the Xbox one, I think. But we started off with Satisfactory, looks like a first-person Factorio, can play co-op, close alpha is coming in coming months, you can sign up for that at satisfactorygame.com if you'd like to get the alpha. What do you guys think? Uh, I thought it was interesting. And that looked I'm curious to see awesome. more. It looked like they, they were spawning enemies. I'm curious if those are enemies like that you can fight with weapons, and, and or if they're like the, the you need to create it, machines like, to fight them the off. Objective of the game is it just to build the factory. I guess we'll so learn more if you sign up for the alpha. And what were you saying? What were you going to say? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. I like the idea of being able to build a huge factory that you can keep getting. I imagine resources to build further stuff. Uh, having a survival, well, maybe not survival, but a combat in it as well or something. So there's probably some type of goal outside of just keep building a bigger factory that gets better resources. And then the tease at the end that, oh, you're going to be building vertically as well. You'll have shit in the sky. I, I'm definitely, I want to check it out. I didn't go into this thinking I was going to want to build a factory, but now I do. <laughs> From the end of it though, it's been a, uh, what do you call it, I think it's like 30 odd square kilometers for the map, so decently sized map, will most of that map be taken up by your shit by the end of it? Probably. Yeah, my favorite bit's gonna be hoovering up all the materials. And developers are Goat Simulator and Sanctum, if uh... That means anything to anyone. Sanctum devs could be interesting. I don't really care about Go Simulator too much, but hey, maybe they can make something decent from it. Yeah. You remember what you were going to say, Cheat? No. Sorry. I'll just get ready to talk about your new favorite game, Uber Driving the Game. It's Neocab. 
We got it. Bad. Yeah, that, that was kind of funny. Really, we're not adding a whole bunch it's, of stuff. It's weird. Really sure. uh, it showed stuff, a little so. bit. It had like a rough well, idea of friend. gameplay. We'll what, we'll, it's we'll like from the sound of it, you were you're a cab driver from a rival cab company from out of town, maybe. I don't know. You come to town, friends like, hey, come to town, and then she's kidnapped by people. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh. Honest, and uh, while you're driving around and, you know, uh, ferrying people around you, un I guess you uncover clues somehow by just doing your job and find out what happens mm -hmm. to your friend or whatever. Some so it's kind of like Yikes. a detective, like, cab game. It's I'm weird. For Wait, sure. Are you sure that's not Night Call? Which, by the way, it's <laughs> not <laughs> Night Call. It's both of them. It's both of them are similar. That's why I thought it was kind of weird. One's like cyberpunk or something, and one's noir. This is like a compare to Cyberpunk 2077. Well, it's probably gone as well. It's probably gone as well. 49D, thank you for the raid with two people. Greatly appreciated. Welcome everyone to GTB3 cast. We we're just talking about the PC gaming show. <laughs> At me on Twitter. I don't care, Adrian. No, this was a Battle Royale game. I don't have anything to say about it. They had some interesting sending points for it. I don't know if they're going to be delivered in game. The winner is Maverick's Proving Grounds. I feel like that name was used before. It, Maverick's Proving Grounds. A thousand player battle royale. Yeah. They reach a thousand players after a week if the game launches. You know, maybe. If the game's good. If the game's bad. If the game's gonna die off within a very short amount of time. Don't talk to me and talk to them. Interesting right. that you can uh, apparently follow footsteps back. via foliage I, I, and such. Think? Apparently that's supposed people to move out of the way if people run through it. Yeah. I think that's I mean, a blatant you know, lie, but, but you can find out by signing up like, to the uh, beta yeah, at mavericks.gg forward slash closed hyphen beta. Don't do it guys, it's another battle royale game. Don't do it. It's an open beta. I don't hate fun. I can't wait for Rapture Rejects. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's That's not exactly <laughs> a battle <laughs> royale. I'm really just waiting for this to end so I can go download it. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See. Um, After that, we were talking about the Forgotten City, which is apparently uh, a old mod for Skyrim. No, uh, being reimagined as a full oh, game. No, that was, that was it seemed like an interesting sorry, like puzzle sorry, game okay, that you way, keep resetting on. I can't wait to go back and play it. I don't know if shooting the same person in the head. It looks like it Wasn't could be interesting. That, that, like, got, uh, like if the da like, like the mod was supposed to be pretty good, so if the mod's supposed to be pretty good, hopefully the reimagined full game can live up to that potential and more without being restricted yeah, by the sorry, game engine. Mm. Will it? That's a question I'm not sure about. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, I wasn't really so too to interested honest, in it. The fact that Jeff Goldberg um, just made that joke. It's just like I think people are just going to forget thing. about the game. That's, that's exciting. <laughs> that's that's why it's called Forgotten City. My good friend Jeff in Control Robinson. I'm going to give him a Oof, shout out because feels bad, there's, huh? there's no other. Uh, yeah, after after that, Jurassic Park Star, Star Control, Control Origins. Origins. You Origins. Know, how much he is Sorry, I the just. Which one was that one again? In Infinite Planets, guys. Three, in with Jurassic Infinite Park three Planet. Being his favorite, uh, mm. I must have missed that one. I don't remember that one. Uh, they called it an action uh, RPG. And with this one, it's, they say uh, infinite, but it makes more sense because it's not. So, Kelly, to answer your question, yeah, uh, for Jeff Goldblum, completely in depth with the planets. Like, there, you can land on all the planets or whatever. On a motorcycle but you kind of just like float race, over them, and you, you're in your ship all the time. I'm looking at They're like I little really, really had my eye on, uh, mini, mini, mini sandboxes, I guess. N O I T A. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's a little, uh, it's a little indie pixelated but it seems game like it's the, more the red, reddish shoes yep, with a really cool of the big like, bomb, like it, it an RPG of than survival or anything like that. Bomb, like going off, like remember worms that old game? Yeah. What you talking about? Yeah. I don't know. It it's strange. Cool, like, uh, a lot of fun, like, we'll, I'll wait platform. to see more it comes uh, out this year. The other game that I can't wait to get my hands on that I think is going to be a, a hilarious. Uh, yeah. well, that's September twentieth, twenty eighteen. So funny. Yep. And you can pre-order and play the closed the beta today. <laughs> and something with it. There was a beta. Beta or alpha? You can 
apply for early access if you so desire. It looks like a game that you may like, and you can play QA for it if you so desire. Uh, afterwards, Hunt Showdown gets some new content. A game, again, it's quite interesting. There is some problems I heard with the multiplayer aspect from the beta. I don't know if they were fixed for a full game or not, where the fact that you could put in all the work in the game and just get sniped at the end and lose everything. So it's apparently Tuesday, something that could happen. Does it still happen? I have no idea. But you get some new content in the game if that is your jazz. You get a vintage crossbow, throwing knives, a hand crossbow, and a sticky bomb. Nice. More stuff for the game. Always yeah, that, improves the game, usually. I remember when that game was first introduced, I thought it looked interesting, but... I have zero interest in it now. I think, I think the game still has... I don't has... think I have credit, but... I think the game setting is great, like the aesthetic for the game is fantastic. Apparently the player base is a bit pish at the moment. Not pish as in like there's not many people playing, as in like pish as in apparently a toxic mess. But who knows? Uh, Ooh, real quick, Metro Exodus is going to be shown on stream here in a minute. Oh, hell yeah. I'll keep so an eye on if that. you guys in chat are interested, I know Steven, you are. Uh, be sure to watch that for hopefully maybe some gameplay. Should be. Gameplay? Gameplay? Yes. Afterwards, we got Archangel Hellfire. I was not paying much attention to what that was. It was like a deathmatch, team deathmatch with mechs. It's in early access now, but officially releases July 17th of this year. I don't think there's really any great mech games out unless you're really into Mech Warrior, but that's really com complicated. And I don't think this one will change that though. Probably not. Oh, also nope. is a uh, dandy point there as well. If you're also in the middle of chaos, that'll be after Metro Exodus. I can't believe Almond's dead. We're down to. Yeah, want to make sure that wasn't awesome, thing. so I'd have to drag him back in. You should talk about video games with us then. He's not here anymore because he got bored. Wow. Uh, he probably just got bored. After that, after that, Sinking yeah. City. Yep. Detective game. There was a date for that. Not that I saw. It's by the people who made the Sherlock games recently. Uh, their games have been quite clunky, so I don't really trust this game. The movement in this game also looked clunky. But I can't tell if that was like, in, like using a controller to shoot, or if that was just clunky movement overall. It yeah, leaves, the, the, setting, the setting looks interesting enough to me to potentially give it a shot. Yeah, it has like a mythological... They said Lovecraftian, and they showed some of the creatures. Uh, so, but it's, I don't think it's anywhere near finished if they didn't even want to give a rough year. So, I can wait. I'll probably forget about it. That's okay. I already have. That, that hurts them. Uh, afterwards, Cheek can talk about this more than I think me and Pop can. Warframe. The Sacrifice coming in June as a free update. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, unless you play Warframe a lot and you like Warframe, like, I mean, it's basically, well, it's a big lore update because uh, uh, they weren't joking about, like, how they kind of made a drastic change with, like, the most recent quest, if I remember correctly. It was, like, a huge uh, change in the lore and stuff. And uh, people have been wondering ever since. So basically that quest will hopefully explain something, I'm assuming. I mean, it has one of the characters that were in the previous quest in it, which was Ballas, that weird looking guy at the end. And uh, Warframe's honestly just a great game to try out, free to play. Like, no obligation to pay for anything in the game at all, actually. You could literally just play free to play the whole way. And uh, yeah, definitely give it a shot if it's interesting to you. It's a very fun, uh, High mobility combat game, third person yeah. over the shoulder shooting. You got abilities with all these different classes and stuff. So yeah, that new update, I guess it's pretty much just like you know they got 
obviously new content coming with that quest. So it's definitely worth a shot. The only, the only reason I stopped playing it myself was I kind of started to feel like I was just like doing nothing when I was playing with like higher level people. I mean, of course, like when I get higher level, I could do some of that stuff, but it just felt like some of the times you'd go into like what are the missions where it's like uh, enemies are coming in, uh, they're coming after like a certain objective. You're defending it. Defense. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. My dog's crying, so he wants to go outside. So. No problem. Yeah, this is the, like, when you went in, like, a defense mode, everyone's like, I'm just going to use all my cool abilities that immediately one-shot all these monsters, and I'm sitting there like, I, I can I can stab them a few times, and maybe they'll die. I mean, people do that because oftentimes defense missions are used as really good places for leveling and also for getting certain types of drops. Basically, depending on a drop. I mean, the thing about Warframe is that it's definitely one of those games you're going to have to look at the wiki a lot <laughs> to find out where stuff drops because it's, I mean, it's an MMO. It's expansive, I guess. So I guess that's just kind of standard, right? It's par for the course. Um, the other thing is, uh, oh, yeah, they said Umber Warframe, right? In that fucking thing? Yeah, so the Umbers are, like, different from, like, Prime Warframes. And uh, people have been really hype about them since. So, yeah, if you were looking forward to an Umber Warframe, which I guess that's going to be... I'm not sure if it's Umbra, Excalibur or not. Like I said, I haven't kept up with Warframe for a little bit, you know. But, yeah, that's pretty interesting, so... First yeah, Umber Warframes will be coming out, you know, basically. They're kind of like Primes, but not. I mean, it's, you know, if you've, if can't really explain it. All I know is that, that people love that uh, kind of shit. The they love Primes. This, they love exclusive-looking uh, stuff in that game. Uh, so Umbra is right up your alley if you're looking forward to that. You know what Primes I love cheap? Amazon Prime? Amazon Prime, but you can connect with Twitch. You know about Twitch Prime? If you have Twitch Prime, you can subscribe to this Twitch channel for free. All you have to do is click on the subscribe button. Click on the little crown that says sub for free. And voila, you have a free month sub to the Go to Bedcast. Hooray! Where you can use such amazing emotes as Go to Beezits. Yeah, and you can zit all over any any and, chat you uh, so uh, desire the, a narrative thread that carries you through each one of them but so yeah that's warframe so much more uh, good game free to play give it a try uh, might be up you know, your alley you never explore, know more uh, freedom uh, to set their own pace yeah. and a whole lot more content it's, than yeah it's, it's definitely worth a shot with it being free there's, sort of, there's really uh, you know, not much reason to just say no style. i'm not going to try <laughs> it <laughs> First shot, if you don't like it then Speaking you didn't pay anything for it train tracks, train all you wasted was, was your time all the trailers, and, that's their whole and your bandwidth what exactly can you do there and your bandwidth so the the train uh, which is crucial net neutrality age i mean they optimized the game a lot so it's shouldn't be too terrible but and uh, the train is what they leave Moscow with, and as they take their journey, uh, you know. So what was next? Or do you uh, want to wait until Popcorn yeah, comes, comes it, back? Uh, add cars to uh, it, um, he'll he may come back. So we're talking about next one. This, uh, it's all the uh, Sega uh, games which are being ported um, to PC. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yep. uh, you got Shenmue uh, One and Two, Shining Resonance, Yakuza Kiwami, Valkyria Chronicles Four, and Yakuza Zero. I haven't played any of those games. Games, so mainly for the area, reasons that uh, they're never on PC, to, obviously. Uh, so uh, uh, where, the fact that they're on PC is, now uh, means that I can play those games. From, like that. Yeah. I was always recommended to play the, the players, Yakuza series, especially like Zero. Is that something that by Austin, is possible to not have and uh, apparently that really is only 20 bucks, and it's discounted right now for 10% off on the Steam. So it, it's I, the, the I've been recommended the same. I even have a PS4. I just haven't really downloaded it because I don't use it enough, that, that carries mm -hmm. you through, and really. So the fact that it's coming up on Steam uh, and it's coming up for quite cheap, kind of relates back especially, like as you said, like $20, uh, that... Uh, style of, of, of gameplay and, and, and narrative delivery where uh, there's certain parts uh, that are that are designed in a way to carry the player through and mm -hmm. always be something that the player can go back to to know where they need to go, what they need to do, what's going on, uh, and to understand uh, um, you know like what what it is that they're doing there. So it's it's kind of that the the core of the game where 
in especially in these uh, big sandbox areas, the player can kind of choose to do what they want when they want. Mm -hmm. um, but they can always go back to the Aurora to know, uh, you know, like where where they need to go next if they get lost or if they get confused or if they, um, you know, want to uh, upgrade something or you know swap out a weapon or th something like that. Uh, another system that follows the storyline as well is that you guys are having all four seasons in this game, correct? Yep. yep. And is that going to affect gameplay anyway at all, or is it purely aesthetics and you get to see all of the four seasons in beautiful Mother Russia? Um, well, I mean that's certainly part of it. Um, definitely. Uh, the, the the game takes place over the course of a year, and uh, through the year, depending on the time of the year it is that the player has gotten to a certain area, uh, it'll be a different season. And in the environment that we're showing off right now, it happens to be spring. And uh, so you see in this environment, uh, a lot of the snow has been melting, um, and uh, uh, in spring, you know, comes storms, and so in, in, in this area there's uh, uh, thunderstorms and, and, and different uh, types of dynamic weather that, that you'll be able to experience within the levels, and the different areas, uh, depending on the type, time of year, will have uh, different uh, seasons that come with different weather patterns and, and things like that. Um, and also the different environments are spread out across the continent, so you'll see different types of environments. Like last year, uh, in the trailer that we made for E3, you saw uh, more of a forest environment that yeah. takes place in the autumn season. So it's kind of a different contrast to what players are used to in the Metro series, which has always been the dead of winter. Yeah. Like very, very cold, snow everywhere, very gray, you know. Uh, a huge thing about the Metro <laughs> games, of course, is the uh, customization of weapons. Mm -hmm. How exactly have you guys worked on that for uh, Metro Exodus? So in previous games, the customization was a little bit limited. Um, you could, you know, maybe buy a, a pre-configured uh, upgrade to a weapon. In Metro Exodus, we've redesigned the weapon system completely. Uh, and now it's more modular, um, and there's kind of uh, there's there's like five hard points on every weapon, where you can change uh, characteristics of the weapon, physical characteristics that uh, uh, affect the attributes. Um, say swapping out a barrel or uh, or a stock or a magazine, um, but you can also add attachments, so scopes and lasers and things like that. Um, and it's much much more customizable to where you can take a weapon in its very base form, and you can you can customize it to approach a situation in the way that you want to. If you're gonna you know approach uh, a bandit camp in uh, you know a stealthy way, you can attach a silencer and maybe you know a red dot sight. Or if you want. Hey to everybody, welcome back to the Gold Bed. Three even. A wide range of options. About two minutes ago, you didn't miss too much. Oh my god. Um, we've also I'm so added, sorry, uh, chat. Uh, can you still hear us well? Hopefully, weapons. you still can. Uh, had uh, Austin just had a little uh, power nap during his nap. And he's back. Say hello, Austin. Uh, occurring with, uh, with weapon hmm. use in <laughs> Good talk. Levels, but in, in this back game, to the video games. Uh, Poppy didn't miss much. We were just talking about the Sega game being ported to PC. I kept hearing Yakuza from both Max and Austin's goods, so I'll keep an eye out on Yakuza 0. I just need to know if the port's good. Other than that, I know Yakuza 0 is a good game from both of them. Yeah. yeah. On the plus side, like as me and Sheet were saying I mean, as well, like, like the game is cheap enough. As far as like, like it's not like a. Not my yeah. It's there, not like you're getting like a sixty dollar game and you're not you know, sure if it's working. At like at most, it's fifteen dollars. If the port isn't working for you, you can refund the fifteen. I mean, how much was it when it originally released? Wasn't it like sixty? It probably was sixty. Those are big games in Japan. If you don't. Maintain your weapon. That's crazy that they're selling it for 20 uh, here. You know, pick up or whatever's equivalent. From an yeah, Obviously, so they just, have a different know, currency. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true, really right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 I think that uh, players would probably spend time uh, you know, choosing what they, what they want. I feel like it was still like, you know, quite they're, they're recent, wasn't it? Yeah. Kuzu really like. uh, uh, Zero but, originally uh, came out. Yeah, PlayStation 3 in Japan in 2015, PlayStation 4 Japan 2015, and worldwide 2017. Craft the things that you need to, so it's like a uh, year know, later, survive, like, uh, packs, and it's coming out uh, apparently uh, August first. Uh, like Windows is what it says on Wiki. It just says August. Uh, oh, maybe it will actually be August first, uh, but uh, on the yeah. conference they uh, said the August. So, sometime in August at least. So yeah, that's coming out for <laughs> twenty, which is <laughs> nuts. System requirements minimum so far says that I'll be able to do it. It says five sixty. I have a five sixty Ti. Hey, hey, pop and play the video game. He happens to be native to a different region. Right. I never worry about processor. Mine's an i7. So. After Sega, we had talk about Killing Floor Two, the Summer Sideshow with Steampunk, and also these new ones that. 
Um, oh, no, she didn't yeah. play that. said it was from a beta, yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a beta, beta um, uh, right, currently, like, well, I guess before it releases they, tomorrow, you were able to go into a uh, beta sign-up on Steam, basically, and uh, you could play the beta version, and uh, that update was pretty big, because not only is it the Summer Side Show event, and that new map, which is really fun. It's also the upgrade to weapons, isn't it? Yeah, they changed weapons pretty drastically. Now, um... What they did with the tier, like the high tier weapons now, is that like the high tier weapons that are more expensive now, they made them cheaper and they're also a little bit weaker. So to get them back to their old like strength, basically you have to upgrade them a bit. But the cool thing about the upgrading is that you can upgrade any weapon. You can upgrade your pistol, your fucking shotgun, like your starting uh, assault rifle or whatever. And you could upgrade those to the point where they are considered a tier five or tier four, however high you want them to be. Yes. That's really cool. And that makes it, that's actually a really good change in my opinion, because it makes it easier, say like if you're coming in on like wave seven or something and, uh, it's like hell on earth or some shit, you know, at least you might have a fighting chance instead of having to spend, you know, like a thousand dollars or, you know, 1,200 dosh on like a scar five. You could just upgrade your AR-15 varmint like and twice and it should above, still be know, able to do comparable there, damage. Yeah, you, you, have, you have a kind of a you know, chance at that point. It's not like you have to like go uh, around and asking everyone on the server, excuse me sir, could you spare me some dosh? Is the only problem with that... I like the upgrading system. Yeah, it's really nice. It feels good. Uh, it might need some tweaking because like I said, the big problem with it now is that since people need to upgrade their shit, they're less likely to spend give you extra dosh in the event that you really do need it. <laughs> so, because they need to save their money now to upgrade their weapons. So, that's yeah. the only downside to it. But other than that, like, it just seems like a really good change overall. If it um, we'll find out. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. So it's and tomorrow, isn't it? like I said, that uh, map that they were showing off in the airship, the airship mm -hmm. is very fun. It's got a lot of objectives that you can do and you can do objectives for like bonus exp and dosh that's good to hear i was, was kind of like worried the map was going to be like really tight looking from like small areas to show it no 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 there's actually it's no, actually level really design with killing four has always been good oh yeah, yeah. that level yeah, that no. level's huge yeah just just as i said like the, the way they were kind of like showing the map it looked like quite like locked in in certain areas no it's a lot bigger than that it's that's good oh yeah the yeah footage did not do it justice. They have like a, an entire garden dome in it. It's weird. It's fun. You can, I think there's like multiple levels as well. Yeah. It's like, like three you floors. can go upstairs. There's like an underground area. Or not underground, but an underneath area. <laughs> there's even a part where like the engines, you can actually get stuck in the room where the fuel's coming out, or when the where the uh, jet propulsion is at, and you could actually roast alive in there if you're not careful. So, uh, and but so can the uh, Zeds, so you can get them trapped in there. Yep. Killing Four Two, pretty fun game. It's also got a free weekend this weekend, so uh, yeah, try that game out if you like it. So surprised that game hasn't gone free to play and just done their crate stuff because they have the crates and other mm -hmm. cosmetics. Like I don't, I don't agree with the crates, obviously, but they're there. To so take a, to take a, like a quite like quick swerve away from uh, PC up, gaming. Uh, Prey just tweeted out about the Mooncrash DLC. The Mooncrash Rachel DLC actually isn't free by itself. If you have the digital the deluxe God. edition, you'll get it. If you Rachel, bought you doing, basic buddy? Prey, uh, Mooncrash is nineteen ninety nine, but that will include so, the later uh, DLCs as well. So it's like a season pass, um, no basically. About, uh, it looks like it. I can't really tell what's happening in the other updates. It just looks okay, like it's like skins for weapons the, and such the, until the Typhon Hunter update, which is late summer. Yeah, just I know. I know. Yesterday, I think we were talking about. I think we said it was completely free. That just kind of clarifies. Remake it? Metal Wolf Find Chaos, it. for chaos. those who it's were okay. asking about it earlier. Okay. And it's more, it's like less of a it's, uh, remake, on stream right now. Just the popped up on stream. Released by From Software. Right. Um, but uh, only on the in the meantime, what was after that? Japan. Oh yeah, Man Eater. You know Already wish listed it so I don't forget. Uh, Open so, world right. action and, uh, shark so PG. Almost, almost so every game that was at PC Gaming Show already has a Steam listing in some shape or form. In it. So and I made sure all the ones I circled are on my wish list so I don't forget. <laughs> crazy, like two or three years ago. Keep up with what they're doing. 
collaboration. I'm really curious what they're going to do with fucking what, open what world shark game. This game when you first encounter like, it. Hopefully it's not just like yeah. really so fast because I, I, I could I see something before, like that being like eh, it's two hours long. Friends, I'm done. I hope it's not too fast and I hope it is actually a decently sized world. I know it's going to sound stupid to say but I hope just most of the area isn't just water. I know that sounds really stupid but like I hope it's not I hope it's not just like empty spaces of water, if you know what I mean. Watch Endgame be like your mutation and start growing like feet or legs or something. And you're on land and it, it, it like expands the world to you by like two or three times. Then. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Oh, that's probably gonna happen. Right. 14 years and uh, after that we had a uh, bravery like network See, online I, I hadn't, I hadn't could not tell until, much about that game uh, it, it looked like a turn-based action game uh, rock yeah. paper yeah. scissors with a nice yeah. aesthetic so, like, yeah 5v5 yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw, so I heard could be interesting I need to know more about it yeah, it's, it the original yeah game, i need to wait for more for that yeah. 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 Did you have to change yeah. any of it pretty much the same thing i don't know i'm not big on uh turn-based okay even if it looks good yeah we went to from uh, after that, I have no idea what the fuck's going on in that game. I saw uh, a tweet. Morningstar. I saw a tweet. It is farming, but your crops are data, and you're growing like a computer system or something. It's weird. It's really weird. That sounds really odd. It seems interesting. I always, I keep saying interesting, but like, it seems unique. It's a different type of farming type deal. So think, like, the aesthetic's different. I guess. Yeah. That's basically if you don't exactly know what the game is. It may even be a bit of both, but that's what I saw from tweets. Uh, otherwise, I don't think I can put my food in the oven. I need to eat before <laughs> someone <laughs> starts. So, better get that there. And, he's, you know, and then after that, we had Overwhelm, 2D platforming shooter. That game is out right now on Steam with a 20% discount. I recommend double check how much that is. Uh, from the gameplay, it so looks I interesting. I need to actually look the into the game like more than the trailer. Kind of funny and, I'm because they didn't the, really the show much of areas by the look of it. Is Richard Hawk. Yeah. Uh, a lot of red. Dick Hawk. A lot of red. Exactly. That seems to be the theme yeah. with those that, types man. of games. Like they'll stick with like a color scheme. I mean, I'm fine with it. The game looks fun. It's not very expensive. Ten bucks is discounted for eight bucks now. Were there what? So, what were and were there looks like it's a fun game to have. from the companies in yeah, Japan about the twenty percent off, five percent yeah, seventy five for what we said eight dollars. We that could be a pretty good price. Uh, uh, all the reviews, I know it's only nine reviews so far, their, but they're all saying done, it's pretty good. Seven out of ten, not the best, but it's decent. Or I mean, that could also be seven out of ten, as in the old proper rating scale not the new bollocks but seven is garbage it is decent nine is amazing who knows that's a rant for another day uh, after that hey do you like uh, do you like dinosaurs do you like making parts for dinosaurs well we have the game for you jurassic world evolution out tomorrow and they you know, they, we, Looks like it could be fun. That tweet I, was I think Pop said the you know, reviews came in and they're mostly favorable. Uh, do you, do Not like amazing, but welcome back. Like, We're talking about Jurassic World. Small company. It was like, you know, 5, uh, oh, real quick, like, real quick then. I want to go back to yeah, Overwhelm. Well, I, I read on the Steam page. It's about so, the enemies yeah, getting power ups, but you don't as a player. Oh, that's actually really cool. So, and it's on Steam now, and it is on sale for $8. $8 dollars means you just mentioned that. Well, uh, oh, okay. can we get into like actually a little? Yeah, you were saying the reviews itself. for yeah, like, you were saying the reviews for Jurassic World were favorable, it, right? Uh, yeah, the only one that I saw was low was IGN, yeah, but I mean they're yeah, IGN. So, start so. Off, what you're seeing okay. here is, uh, um, let me double uh, check if there was like a mega thread uh, under uh, all the E3 so piles. And and uh, yeah. Mike Wilson, if Michael Wilson, the president. If the reviews are mostly favorable, it's worth at least checking out. If you like dinosaurs. Why not feed people to dinosaurs? Pretty sure you can do that in the game if you like. Real quick, I mentioned Lawbreakers is free to play. Uh, same exact thing that I mentioned right after 
was that they're probably shut down anyway, though. And there's a thread here from two hours ago. Lawbreakers is shutting down September 14th. So, I mean, what else are they going to do? The company's under, so... I can't believe Nate Charlie is taking her favorite game away. After that, for people who have, for people who have VR systems, um, you have Stormland it's a lot of, it's a being game, developed it's by Insomniac. It's an open-world VR game. Looks like it could be interesting. I'd love to try it, but I had to sell my Oculus, so I can't try that for a while. Say, hey, this is what you're on your schedule today. You have to meet with the foreign minister of China for your meeting. You're going to have to the comments on? I have to save America. Nope. Like that. Oh, for sure. Stormland. Stormland? No. It's VR. I don't care. Yeah, sorry. It's, <laughs> it's just kind of dialogue, but it's fair fun. enough. It's a lot of fun. I, I tried to make it interesting, chat. I hope you I hope you understand. And are happy to bring it to their uh, after that, we uh, had... Uh, when's the next conference? The next conference is starting in 37 minutes. And that will be so many. Yeah, you know, that's one of the questions so, uh, we kind of posted. be the last it, it, conference it of the night, but that may be a long one, one too, for all Japan, we know. So it, at most, it'll probably be an error. I, I doubt it'll go long with an error. They might have surprises! If they want to win E3, they need to have surprises. Not just what they talk about. They need to have Rayman. Exactly. And, then, and you know, translation maybe in PlayStation All Stars the, too. Let's <laughs> not. Companies going bankrupt. How are we going to get uh, radical the heights then? Uh, what you're going to do to get radical heights is you're going to go outside. You're going to empty your garbage so bin. You're going to hop in, and you're going to have more fun. Change the voiceover. We don't want to change too much. I mean, we even had talks about. Jeez, I didn't know you felt such a felt that way about the company. People haven't been able to play this yet. This is not a remaster, like they're revisiting something they've already played. Uh, played yeah, it played looks like Jurassic World, World Evolution is like. So have you had a lot of uh, It's time above game, average. So? Yes, I have. And you've been hey, average Alice. to above uh, Nintendo's no, conference tomorrow. The, what's, it's yeah, Nintendo's conference play, tomorow at 12 p.m. Eastern, so exactly Xbox. noon. And a uh, oh, and that'll so be the last play, conference that we co-stream, I believe. So, I, I believe so. I'm sure there'll be a lot there, too. So, yeah. unless, or, or, unless still things pop up. If they, they allow us, we'll probably actually also coast from the Invitational. So if it's uh, not too late into the evening or anything. Sure. Um, we'll see. I'll talk that over with Austin later. So I just played it, uh, yeah. played this demo and if they allow us. I don't know if they'll allow us to restream that. And it's a lot of fun. So, after that, as we know, 2018 is the year of Battle Royale games. But did you know that 2019 is the year of Uber games? We're talking about Night Call. You're a taxi driver. He seems to also be a detective. Yeah, they said he was a detective, but also a cabbie, so that's weird. But I can't believe being a detective is so shitly. The first cut of the trailer, yes. we didn't have the Let's Party in there, we just had that, yeah, that uh, scene, and then he came back But I'll, I'll yeah. keep an eye on it, they didn't really give a date, they didn't show too much, but I like North style they're games. Good, they're good it's coming from Raw Fury, and Raw Fury seemed to publish, like, quite odd games, but also quite well done games. I, love that. I mean, they, I, love that I believe they helped publish uh, Kingdom, originally, which is the, like, game where you're on a horse running back and forth, building up a little town. You know, uh, a, a, a game similar to another game. Uh, yeah, Dandy, we were speaking right, about it. It was similar to what the this game called part of their history, earlier. Uh, Neocab. The yeah. So they, they were both shown at the we're, exact we're same conference. We're so be on the lookout for that genre software. on the rise. Yeah, yeah, fucking that's amazing. Cool. Yeah, right? And, uh, yeah, this is a yeah project, it looks like it could be good. Cheat, any word? On Nightcall? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks cool. I like the art style. Uh, what is the it's another like? is it cab guys? detective game, really except question. not cyberpunk. Yeah, I mean, I, like I don't know if the game actually exists. I don't. Yeah, if it stays relevant for some reason, it doesn't get swept under the bridge. Uh, maybe I'll keep an eye on it and actually uh, be interested in buying it. I don't. I wouldn't imagine it'd be a full price game. It doesn't look like it'd be. So. No, no, no. It seemed like an indie title. It'll be in the ring, ten to twenty dollars. So what Probably. We're gonna do is add like a new game plus Hopefully 10. Mode. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a little more in the vein of From Software. So those maybe fans it'll be five a much more difficult, maybe challenging uh, thing. But we Who knows? Us, so we bring this game uh, for the most part. Um, like I said, after that, we had Sable Open World Exploration game. Achievements. They talked about how the game doesn't have combat. Haven't done that yet. I don't there know is, exactly uh, what the game is about, we, except for your character leaving like, home for the first time. Yeah. 
and uh, it's pretty much just like about the style. That's what they said. Like, Let's party I like the style, but I don't think that game's sure, for me. Yeah. I think um, so, I would yeah, uh, like things like achievements and trophies. get pretty Excellent. bored. Okay. Uh, when Not that I hate exploration, but because um, we don't know exactly when because it doesn't look like there'd be a lot to do. And so when you want to do something like that where you do some lore, I don't know if open world's always the best choice. Yeah, I, I, I mean, a little bit. If, if uh, I can see the art style of the game looks interesting. It's like the really much it's, it's big in the robots, detail in the game, but still pulling off enough detail to make everything look different. It's a solid art style. Oh, by the way, Paul, if you want to do another tweet in the public Discord, about 30 minutes to sell me. Oh, yeah. From up second class, second support. Xbox and uh, later yeah. this year, you any other words of it, Sable, before we move on? Mm -hmm. So, uh, don't go away. We got some more stuff coming to you right here. Bye. No, I don't think so. Cheat. Nope. All right, so All right. after that, we had Second Life 2 in space. Man, I can't believe they showed off more of the new Thief game. Never mind that Star Citizen 2. <laughs> I. It's literally, you need to be rich to play that game. <laughs> and it's not even finished. Well, they're on Alpha... Th or Alpha 3.2, coming soon. Just to you, chat. Just to you. I don't know if anyone in this call is ever going to play it. Nope, probably not. I'm not made of money. Same, so... It's just... Yeah. Moving on. Uh, Genesis Alpha 1, coming up September 4th. As I said, I played the game at EGX. Uh, the game at that time felt kind of unpolished, but I also don't know if that's just because at the booth there wasn't really any tutorial for the game. So it was just kind of like, hey, here's the controls, hop in. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, my ship caught on fire. I died. Uh, I walked into a corridor, the corridor broke, I got sucked into space, I died, uh, my ship received an alien infestation, all the corridors broke off, I was stuck in the room with the aliens, and guess what? I quit the game and walked off. But Steven sucks at video games, boo! I, I am the worst at video games. Ever. Boo, don't, don't Steven, boo! It's, uh, yeah. If with a with a proper tutorial of actually knowing what to do in the game, it could be very interesting. Without a tutorial for the game, it's it's just very overwhelmingly confusing to to begin with. Boo, boo, Stephen, boo. But not like boo booing me. What do you guys think of Genesis Alpha One? Boo, Stephen, mm. boo. <laughs> Moving on. I had no thoughts on it. Yeah. Moving on, chat. Have you had a, have you had a nice meal recently? Are you ready for the PlayStation conference? Are you sure you're not going to starve during it? You better not starve. Don't starve, Hamlet. Coming out of December. Oh, Stephen, boo! <laughs> Just 